All right, hello, gentlemen. Speak of the devil. Yes, we're on the air. How are you gentlemen doing? Good. All right, yeah, I'm all right. Thanks, man. All right, let me let me find the window. God damn it, which window is it? Okay, well, I'll figure it out here in a sec. But anyway, yeah, good to see you guys. Here, you guys. Uh, harmful opinions, man. Thank you for stopping by. No problem. Thanks for running a stream at an earlier time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to get you on a couple months back, but we weren't able to because of the, you know, we usually do it at 11 p.m. And that's kind of what, like 5 a.m. your time. So, yeah, uh, four or five. Yeah, 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 four. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little unwieldy. Anyway, how you been, man? I'm all right, man. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so, by the way, Mr. Medicare is here too. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Harmful, you recently came back to YouTube. Uh, explain your, your decision behind that. My decision behind that was I just felt like it. <laughs> There's no <laughs> big reason. I mean, pe people know originally when I was going on YouTube, I got up to nearly like 100k subs. Someone got into my shit, wrecked it. Then I started going again, got banned. Then I got banned again. So I'm really just crossing my fingers that I don't get banned yet again. Now, how many times were you banned for, from YouTube? Somebody told me it was, it was nine. Twice. Twice, okay. It was, maybe, it was maybe, twice. They maybe they exaggerate. I think I think they're saying that because you know when your when your main account gets banned, the the other channels connected to it, and I had some other like archivey stuff connected to it. No those. I remember didn't didn't one time your channel get hacked and, and all the videos deleted off of it? It wasn't just they took your channel down. What what, what exactly happened for the people who don't know? I don't think there was a videos deleted one. There was one time where I hid my shit because of okay. Twitch. Uh, there was one time where Twitch enacted their new uh, policy, which is fucking awful, where you are you can get in trouble on Twitch, you can get banned, you can get restrictions on your account for what you say and do on other platforms. So for a while, I hid some stuff, uh, but that wasn't one of the times now, stuff was. Now, like, Twitter is talking about doing that now, too, uh, off-platform behavior. Technically, it's it's always been in the uh, terms of service, but they're they're talking about actually starting to enforce that now. Which yeah, I mean it's straight, it's straight cancer. Yeah, I, I it, tried it, to I tried to take the route of okay, I'm gonna make sure they can't get me on anything. But then you find nothing's fucking fun anymore if you do that. So I've fuck it. If I get banned, I get banned. Yeah, well, it's kind of like <laughs> when you go to school and and they try to punish you for something you like you got in a fight off school grounds and they try to suspend you for that. I mean, at least that's what it reminds me of. Um, and it's bullshit there too for all the students who may be listening. Um. Okay, so tell me, around the time people started fucking with your account, trying to get you banned, was around the time you you started going in on Canada, is that correct? Yeah, I think it was, it was sort of, I had my time to do the last big video I did on it, and I, I was mostly doing other stuff, you know, if something would come up, some new info I thought people should know, I'd do it, but yeah, it was right around after there. So... You know what interests me, I guess. Of course, I followed the Canada stuff when it happened. You know, when, uh, I guess yeah, it was you did a couple stories. Years. Yeah, yeah, I did. I guess it was a couple of years ago uh, now. But a lot of people are not actually familiar with it. Um, so we were, you know, I saw some comments on, on a couple of our streams and they're like, well, I never really heard about Candid. What's going on? I guess just a short uh, explainer. We went through some of their, some of the uh, shilling videos last week, which was, which was. Well, and, of, and uh, Ralph, could you, could you tell your audience when we were looking at those shilling videos and Zidane, I think brought it up uh, on the stream where we were watching that. What would you, what category would you fit those particular accounts into? If you had to come up with a label. For those uh, particular individuals, what kind of a group would you say that was? I mean, I think they labeled themselves, right, as the uh, skeptic community. Oh, okay. That's a brave stance to take. I didn't want to throw it out there, but <laughs> <laughs> Ralph is going to. Yeah, I, I think these were these were all quote-unquote skeptics. Like, they weren't too skeptical when the check came through, though. They cashed that really quickly and uh, started shilling immediately. They were they were very careful and very precise and used their <laughs> logic and rationality to... Uh, Cut out the bits their audience might not like about it, though. Yeah. Um. And matter of fact, I got a message the other day. One of the people we were watching in the in the stream, uh, or in the whatever clip show of it, got paid five hundred dollars. I had assumed it was more. Now this was a more of a mid tier person, so I don't I don't know how the you know it depends on the paid. size. Yeah, a lot. yeah. and so, it, it tends to scale up a lot because if you if you go on a website like Famebit and look at how 
sponsorships go for channels. It tends to be very, very low until you hit a huge point where you're talking like uh, maybe 500k subs, maybe a, a million plus. Then you start getting into much larger numbers. Yeah, like the Amazing Atheist, right? Like he probably got more and he also got what? An iPhone to fucking give away. Well, didn't he name the amount of money? I thought I could have sworn he had stated somewhere that it was like between 10 to 20k. Yeah, I thought I thought so too. Like he was going on about 20k or something. That's what I heard. And he was really obstinate. I, I guess. Okay, so first off, just explain candid for the people who don't know. I'm, I'm assuming most people watching the stream do know, but maybe just a little short explainer. But what it was, well, there, there was this app some of you might have known about called Secret. Uh, which was just like an anonymous messaging app. And they had some trouble with like abusive content. They got bad press. I think they even shut down. And then the idea of Candid, if you, like, if you look through old news stories when it came out, was to be like that app, but to be safe. Their, their, ad, their official ad says it's the place where no trolls or bullies are allowed. And the twist on the format of the app they copied was to have an AI, the kind of thing that everyone fucking hates on Twitter and YouTube that automatically filters through everything. That about so, do it, or you want more, more yeah, detail? Yeah, just go, get, give us a little bit more. Yeah, so what got you interested in, in investigating in the first place? Was it just the blatant shillery from channel after channel, or? It was the number of ads. It was the number of ads. I remember the night I decided, right, I'm going to do a video on this, because I'd seen a bunch of ads. I'd seen that lots of normie YouTubers were doing it. They did hit they, they they spread their marketing net quite wide. You had the super normie YouTubers with multi-million subs doing it. But then I noticed so many skeptics were doing these ads. And then I think the night I looked into it was the night Shoe on Head put her ad up. And I was like, wow, what is this fucking thing? Five seconds search. And I'm like, wait, all the, all the information you can find about it is about how their bot's going to be great and how it's going to make it a lovely, safe place for everyone. And my mind was fucking blown because I know the audience of, of these people would hate that. And I noticed that in, in the ads people were putting out, they weren't talking about it. They they it's like they they decided to advertise it as something it wasn't, or at least dodge the main point of this app in a now, way that would make people want to use it because they didn't know about the bot. Let let me ask you this. Do you think um these people actually knew what it was or were they just completely stupid? I mean, I don't know that stupidity is not really a great, a great defense, but are they well, just... Well, Ralph, I mean, we, we know that Matt did because I had a conversation yeah. with him on his channel at like three in the morning and we had to, you know, uh, cover it up because he was still worried about the contract and he didn't want to say candid. So we called it discreet.com. But when I basically brought up a lot of, you know, what harmful kind of uncovered and what was kind of known, he said that not only was he aware of it, that was their mission statement was to develop this bot. He said that's what their goal was. So he obviously knew what they were doing. And I guess and actually, the others did too. Something something beyond that is I got access to a couple of their contracts and also the instructions they give you for making a video. And they, they actually ask you to talk about the bot because they wanted people to know about it. They wanted it to, to be a selling point. So people actually went out of their way to not mention the bot, presumably because they knew their audience wouldn't like it. Yeah. Um, so uh, another part of it is they they kind of tried to paint you as as insane, uh, and and a lot of their you know defenses of it. Monday, Matt put out a video saying, "Well, you know, pretty much." Cons I forget what the title was, of it was, but yeah. How many uh, how many hit piece videos did you have? I, I think weren't there like three of them? I think like not only one one named me. So Monday, Matt named me right, but then you had uh, Ahmed Skeptics one, which was censored mm -hmm. opinions. Uh, was the title so it was sort of a reference to me but he avoided naming me and then you had the uh some black guy one where he just refers to alex jones type people coming out of the woodwork to warn you about the bot and i i actually talked to some black guy around that time and he was saying well i'm gonna advertise it because i know about all this stuff but it hasn't happened to me yet so fuck it i'm gonna get all my followers to go onto it <laughs> Yeah, uh, also you did a stream with uh, Sargon of Akkad, and I, and I remember watching part of it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that he was... pretty much tried to paint you as, as a little uh, little out there, too. Or am I misreading it? You know, yeah, 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 definitely. That was a weird yeah. one, because he asked me to come stream. And then we go into the stream, and it was like, okay, so what do you want to talk about? He's like, dude, you invited me. But <laughs> then, it, then it sort of went down a weird... It, it was it was it was kind of a weird stream. It seemed to me, you know, this is a, a layman. He also read, you know. uh, he, he no, had also talked to me privately, trying to tell me not to uh, 
this is this is a couple of years ago, obviously. Yes. Uh, but he he had a private talk with me on Skype, trying to tell me to stop going into the candid stuff. Why? Because otherwise he's going to wake up with a horse head in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, on, on that stream, didn't he say you were autistic a lot? Uh, that's what I keep. Yeah, saying. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was know. that was around the time it was weird because he because um. My my sister's autistic. I am actually autistic, high functioning, obviously. Although people who watch my streams might argue otherwise. <laughs> um, my sister's autistic as well, and uh, my mom posts or posted on Twitter some like stuff about autism. And the day he he invited me to come on stream, he posted something that had like a screen cap of my mom and then something else on top of it. And it was really weird that he picked that out because um, he didn't follow her or anything. So that that fucking weirded me out as well. Yeah, and I, I guess you know, as far as we know, he he didn't actually take any money from from no, Candid. I uh, I don't believe he did. No. But so why would he do that? Just just running interference, running uh, you know, get 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 any get anything that causes uh, you know, upset amongst the community to just calm down. It's almost like this whole community thing. This whole you know, all that shit is is cancer. Pretty much, yeah. Unless, <laughs> unless you can, unless you can properly clash, and that was that was my big thing. Where it's like, holy fuck, don't call me a skeptic, because then you get, I get to post this juicy stuff, and instead of looking at it, people are like, oh no, mommy and daddy are fighting. Stop doing it. It's like I'm fucking doing it for you guys, the the viewers who should know stuff. And I wanted were, to get away from that, especially early on. You were pretty much the only person calling this out. I'm pretty much the only person not getting paid. Yeah, she yeah. tried. She tried to get me to do a video. That was I didn't fucking like that. Like her first response was, "Oh, how about like you call me and we can arrange for you to do a video where you describe the app how we we want you to describe it." This is Bindu Ready, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I should have said the CEO of the company. Some some dude making videos in his bedroom. She calls him and is like, "Oh, how about we uh, clear things up? How about you?" Give wait, me wait. How did she? How did she get your phone number? She didn't call me. She wanted to call me. Oh, she okay. asked, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. That, that would that would add another fucking layer to it. But no, she she emailed me. I was saying she wanted to arrange for me to make a a video, oh, a shackle for the good guy. Yeah, just say nice <laughs> things about the app. It's just an app. Haven't you watched some black guy? Come on, just take the money. You know, it's just an app with millions in funding from people connected to Facebook and the like. Dendy company, Reddit. Dendy Reddit. A company made up it. mostly of ex Google engineers, <laughs> a CEO who used to work for Google, a CTO who has some weird DARPA connections in the past. Yeah, not touching it. Didn't uh, Bindu Reddy even talk? Try to talk to your mom on Twitter. Point. On Twitter, yeah, she was saying she she was tweeting at my mom something about how she'd had people giving her anonymous tips about my mother's account, which was just really weird. What well, the hell does that mean? It's impressive on, on one hand. I mean, you shit posted this bitch so hard she had to tattle to your mother on social media about it. I mean, she went insane on social media. I got her to um, justify the Holocaust. Um, because... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if I could. She was... Okay, so there's this creepy sort of um, ethic behind the idea of this app. And it is... If you can get a bot to learn based on people's reports and stuff, right? If you can figure out from the people using it what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, then you have a bot that can, bot that can enforce like morality. And she was arguing with me on Twitter, and this is all gone now because my account got banned. You'd have to search through her tweets that are remaining. The idea was what's moral is based on what people find acceptable. And she was talking about how, well, is it okay to go naked in the street? It's not okay to go naked in the street because people don't accept it. And I, I said to her, um, like was the holoc was the Holocaust okay? Because you know people were going through with it. People were exterminating people. Does that make it okay? Because they were okay with it. And she ended up writing something back that included, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> you should have used that in a, one of the videos. And been I like, did. Oh, did you really? Oh, I don't remember it. which one, but I put it in there. And she, uh, she went on a she went on a call with Bearing. She went on a stream with that. Bearing, and it was she comes off as being like on something. I don't think she is. I think she's just dumb, but it's Isn't like that she was the, drunk. That's where she goes, harmful opinions is God, like 15 yeah. times. I'm like, what the fuck? She just malfunctioned. And now she's at Amazon Web Services. 
Yeah, she's she's like in charge or like the um, general manager of their AI department. Apparently, actually, harmful. Do you know uh, what the effective date of her getting uh, on board with Amazon was? Do you know how long ago that was? Ooh, it was it was. I think it was early last year. So right around this is before the new policies on Twitch went into place. <sighs> I believe so. Yeah, so, I don't. No, I so don't think she had anything to do with that. Well, I, it, it is, it is, it is coincidental timing, though, isn't it? Somebody that's coming up with basically a censorship bot gets a job at Amazon. Amazon owns Twitch, and after she gets the job, now mysteriously Twitch is headhunting people on Twitter for saying a uh, faggot, so they can ban them. I think it's, I think it's worse than that because of because of the far reach of the service she she works with has. Yeah, according to her LinkedIn page, she joined Amazon Web Services July 2017. She's been there for like a year and a couple months. Yeah, so this this would be okay. All right, interesting. Man, I got think, right? I got nailed for the new um for the new Twitch terms of service. This is just an aside. This isn't connected to all that. But I got fucking nailed not because of what I did, but because of what my chat was saying. What did they Wait. say? I talked to some weeaboos. I was doing an IRL <laughs> stream, so you know, I was out and about. I had a camera, and I was talking to some weeaboos who were in Sheffield. I all saw dressed that up, actually. Dressed up like anime, and my chat said "gas the weebs," and I got a day's <laughs> I got a day's ban for my chat saying "gas the weebs." Well, the way Twitch looks at it is, you should censor your chat. I think if they if you don't actually, yeah, the, the yeah. guy said um, I didn't I didn't do anything to discourage my chat's behavior, and yeah. I continued to provide content that made them respond like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If if you're not proactive there, um, so at least I, I at least I haven't seen it from YouTube where you, you'll get a strike for for what the chat says. So I just let the chat say whatever, pretty much. But uh, yeah. Um, oh, on another note, totally off topic, they did reverse the strike on our backup channel where we uploaded the Monday Mass stream, and they gave me a strike for spam and deceptive practices. Uh, so they reversed. Wait, that. so they re they reversed it and gave you another one, or it's completely no, no. Reversed? They 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 took it away. They took it away. Oh, so okay. the, the okay. streams back up and all that. Um, so, all right, couple super chats. Gray haired snake says harmful opinions is God. Soilless Matt says harmful. You just need a good bouldering. Fourteen, Awuz says harmful is two percent. Them. Uh, Malcolm from the North says, taking bets now. Who's the next ske skeptic that's going to step into the peaceful sunset? I'll replace that. Metaphorically, of course. Don't flag me, Matt. Uh, any any thoughts on that panel? Oh, yeah. I got. <clears throat> I have thoughts on it, but I'm not sharing them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nice tease there. Fuck you, Google says, harmful opinions. Opinions is God times four. Quote, Bendu. Vegeter says an AI bot is the ultimate centrist. Horseshoe on head did nothing wrong. Uh, I, I guess what got me was how staunch. I mean, I know they were paid to defend it, but everything you put out was just you know dead to rights. It was clearly you know. Wait, Ralph, are, are are you saying you got the feeling that there was a community uh, behind the shilling that maybe that they were grouping together and creating a, a unified narrative to go after the one guy saying that they were, you know, full of shit and doing something. Well, wrong. yeah, they tried to paint this guy as crazy. Oh, hey, Alex listen, Jones. You need, you need to yeah. watch some, some black guy. Okay. Alex, because he explained <laughs> it just an app. I mean, even if they don't sell, even if they don't sell any of the proprietary technology, even if they don't sell the data, these people are pretty close knit. Everyone in that sort of AI development community, they talk, they'll discuss their methods of doing it. And Candid had an interesting method where they sort of got users to police each other and to help train the bot. So if you don't want that shit spreading, don't push shit that uses it, is what, I'm, what I was trying to say. But then you get people going, oh, you can't sell the AI exactly as it is, so it doesn't matter. But no. This See, these so people, much more than that. They don't really care about censorship of the internet and this and that because they're not really saying anything that controversial in the first place. I mean, with their their videos, their shows, it's like, oh, lol, SJW. I mean, it's not. You know, why do they care? Nobody's. They're not going to take that content away in the first place. Um, you, you see, all that shit's still up. It's still, for the most part, monetized. They're not really worried about censorship of the internet. They they don't have to deal with strikes. Uh, they don't have to deal with. I mean, look, we're in our third channel in the last week. They they don't have to worry about that. I mean, they're they're. I, I don't know if I want to say controlled which, opposition, but yeah, go which, ahead. Jim. Which they are you talking about again? 
the skeptics. Okay, the... I just wanted to be clear on that. <laughs> I don't fucking say oh, I don't like them, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't when, give you're, a fuck. when you're yeah. saying, uh, yeah, but I, uh, Jim, I was calling these people out before it was a thing. I, I, I know, but I know what I'm saying too. is, I can't be the only one to find it ironic, right? I think everybody in this call would find it a bit humorous that they helped to basically create a fucking censorship bot, and then a year later cried about the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. I, would, oh, I would say you that's want, ironic. You want to know another sweet irony? I would. You know when people were complaining about how keywords were weighted differently in terms of ads? Like if, if, you're, if your uh, video had certain keywords, you'd get more ad payout or less. Right. Do you know who originally implemented that system? Who's that? Bendy Ready. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I can I can get you a link if you want, but if you find her like it did some talking. So wait, they were literally working for the person that fucked them out of ad revenue. That is I mean, brilliant. When she, when she implemented the, the, the keyword weighting was in like early early two thousands, but she's the person who implemented the original form of keyword value weighting. Oh, see, that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> no, love remember that. when they showed up to VidCon this year with the the yellow whatever the demonetized symbol and they they thought that was a, a great statement and they're they're fighting the man when they were working for the man the whole time i i just what's another term for that when you're when you're working for the person you say you're fighting against was that controlled opposition is that the term i'm looking yes. for uh, uh, i okay. think it might be might be uh, maybe that's what i'm grasping for here <laughs> yeah uh so you did a video the other day uh, on Canada as well. We watched it on the kill stream. Uh, what what caused you to go back in on Canada? Jim's video. He he brought it up fresh. A lot of people were interested, so I go, okay, have another have another little snack. Here's the general idea of what went on, and then here's what I know about where they've gone. Oh come on! I think we know the real reason. All right, uh, everybody says harmful opinions is God, and here comes Matt claiming to be Odin, and it was a fucking clash <laughs> of the title yeah, of yeah, the yeah. on the internet. What did you think? Uh, there can be as, only one. As a little aside here uh, about Matt, you know, eating shit there, and he's still eating shit as we speak. That was uh, a beautiful moment. That's a classic internet moment. I, th I think it is like the quintessential, even though I was drunk out of my mind and don't even remember much of it. I, th I think it was the quintessential kill stream moment there. Uh, but just especially how I guess from a personal standpoint, how you try to say this guy's, you know, Alex Jones, he's conspirator. He's he's crazy. What? What? We're just take Goy. Look, we're just taking some ad money, Goy. Like, no problem. They paid us to pimp this ad. Nothing wrong with this app. Uh, just from a personal standpoint, seeing him just get bitch slap what what was that like oh it's it's hilarious <laughs> it just it just feels feels pretty good i mean i wasn't too bothered by his video especially how could i how could i be upset at someone trying to say i'm crazy when their video was received the way it was uh i mean if you go and look at that clip he made the the sort of ratings on it and the comments underneath um but still the it, it feels better more because of the social media back and forth we've had yeah, I notice he's not using Twitter very much nowadays. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, didn't the CEO tell him to not talk to you on Twitter anymore? And he right, was responding to be... everything. I'll, I'll, ex I'll explain what's up with that. We can't be 100% sure what happened because it's not all there. But I ran a little experiment because of the, the video he made and because of how he was behaving with me. I decided to just deliberately just provoke him as hard as I could on social media. And then because I was having a dialogue with Candid CEO at the time, say to her, hey, why is, why is one of the people you're paying being so nasty to me? Why is he going after me so much just because I criticized your product? And then what happened after I emailed her that? She tweeted at him and said something like, uh, DM me, please. And then he suddenly started ignoring me. Hmm. So who knows what went on behind What, what a coincidence. I, <laughs> yeah. what's going on <laughs> I wanted to see if I had the power to leash him. <laughs> via candid and you did you made him sit like a good boy i think so <laughs> i think i i can't prove 100 percent that's what happened but hey i got the result i was looking for if that did happen you basically threw him into the cut corner 
Oh, he's used to that position. By the way, I just put the uh, the Discord link in the, in the uh, chat. There, we're gonna take some calls here here momentarily. Let me let me be a, a good shekel master and and read the super chats, which I greatly appreciate. By the way, Troy Fowler says I spent one hundred and fifty dollars last night, so I might as well spend a bit more here. Fuck you, egg. Thermid Thermid. Hey. <laughs> Thermidor Roosevelt says Maddox also shield for candid. I wasn't aware of that, but that he doesn't, did. That doesn't really. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> that is <fucking> perfect. <laughs> or to um he um because you know Blair White did as well. He, she was on his podcast or something, and they they spent a couple minutes just talking about how oh it's so silly. Look, Twitter does it. Too. Twitter has censorship too. Why do people care? It's like, would you do an ad for Twitter? Why is it every name you bring up is not surprising? Anybody else taken aback by that? No, <laughs> nope, not, at all. not at all. Right? Not at all. It's, it's, it's not surprising at all. You, you throw a name out there, they advertise for him. I'll be like, yeah, I can picture that. Matt also defended Maddox, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he Funny. did. Hardcore Funny defended him. Huh. Yeah, so did, um, there were other people that went on that. Oh, Lacey Green, I think, did too. She went on his show. Uh, I think she defended wow. him as well, yeah. Huh. Internet Maybe. friends until the end. What, what if what if those contracts weren't to candid? What if Bindu Reddy owns these fuckers for three years and they're in a little <laughs> That's grip? Personal, That's what I'm personal services contract. <laughs> <laughs> Indentured servants, yeah. <laughs> because those contracts aren't up yet, right? Because um from the snippet that we saw, it was till the life till they can't talk about it plus two years afterwards. Or to the life of the contract plus two years. So if their contracts ended in uh like twenty seventeen ish then they're still they're still under you know NDAs till 2019. Some of them. Yeah. Oh, as long as we're as long as we're picking out random bits and pieces that we can remember. There's the uh, there's the time where after there was some backlash and I made my video. There was some backlash to shoe on head for doing that. She put up a little video called "Can Did Do Nothing." And, yeah, we uh, watched claimed, that. We watched that the other night. Claimed yeah. it. It was a one time thing. Mm. Not on contract anymore implying that she didn't have a gag when she did, and then went on to do another ad because she was still on contract, and that wasn't true. Now, was that the one where she said, uh, I think this was her. I don't know. We watched so many shills the other night. It's, it's hard to remember, but I believe it was her where she said, I had already seen this cool app, and I was going to talk about it anyway. Was that her, or was that yeah. some boy? Yeah, that was her. Probably. She's like, I'd already seen this cool app. I was going to talk about it anyway, but then you know, they, <laughs> they offered me a sponsorship, so, you know. Like, like it was just, you know, out of the blue, kind of. I mean, do you think there was some jealousy behind the scenes? Because with the leaked audio from Matt's Discord when he was talking about Chew on Head, you know, mm. aside from saying that uh, Greg cried when he see, or saw a vagina, um, he went into her candid community and was like, it's the most annoying, uh, shitty fucking part of the entire website. Do you think that was more bitterness because she's probably at a much higher fucking pay rate than Monday Matt? Uh, I would imagine there's some of that and there. And probably on top of that, uh, we know that some of the people were getting paid per person who signed up to their fan group. Oh, fuck, really? Wait, so what? So that, that, that might add an extra level of jealousy. You know, you get sometimes with, with sponsorships, like if you go on a site like FameBit and look at the sponsorships available, and there are tons. I don't know why people had to go for this shitty fucking app. There are so many sponsorships available all the time. But sometimes you'll get a sponsorship where it's like, you get this much for the video, assuming it hits its its view requirement or whatever, if there is one. Plus, sometimes it will be like, you know how people are always like, please join this group, please join this group. Sometimes that's a requirement with no bonus, but sometimes there's also a bonus where uh, for every person you can get to sign up to a group, you get paid a dollar extra. Is that why they all were shilling their fucking groups? Like some black guy said, be sure to join my candid group. And yeah. <laughs> some, some people did not get that bonus and just had to do it anyway. But some people, I'm aware, were given a bonus for and how many I, people they could get to sign up. Can I ask you a follow-up, too? I've always been kind of curious about this, because I know Bering, um, you know, redeemed himself and all of this and didn't go along with the flock on it. Did anybody else that was involved in this step up and say, you know what, this is wrong, or I'm sorry, or uh, you're right, or you're on the right track, or was it just him? Uh, no one who actually did anything with them. No. I, 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 they might be too scared of violating their contract. Like, I don't give a shit if people apologize to me or whatever. They don't need to apologize to me. Uh, but, like, I just want 
things to be g good for viewers. I don't like people's viewers getting fucked because it makes me sick to see, makes me upset to see people getting fucked when they don't know what's up. Um, but no one, no one did. The only other person who was involved with them slightly, who um, did help me, was Edgy Sphinx, uh, who's now called Braving Ruin, right? Braving yes. Ruin. And yes. what he did was he he just got them to send them a contract and then handed it to me. Um, what else? Teal Deer helped me, but he he ah, I don't know if I can say what Teal Deer did, but Teal Deer did something very helpful. <laughs> Why well, I know he's he's been really outspoken about um, not just like the Canada stuff, but he's he's not a big uh, fan of the skeptics as a group as well. Uh, I've seen a lot of his videos regarding that. Yeah. By the way, Till Deer, if you're listening, we really want you on the kill stream. I'll, I'll put that out there. He's not he's not the easiest easiest man to get a hold of, but yeah. Guy let me himself. let me put it this way in a in a non incriminating or non problem causing way. He got me an amazing piece of audio that perhaps I should not have had access to. Oh, see, now you're cock-teasing us. Now we're getting <laughs> blue ball here. He, he, he shared with me a certain conversation with a certain someone who seemed very scared of me. Was it the Quarry King talking about his boulder hunting? And then he's, <laughs> huh? he's ducking and no, covering? No, no, no. <laughs> it was... Um, someone... someone uh, it was a business person. Let's put it that way. Okay, well, that rules out every skeptic. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a YouTuber. So let me uh, let me uh, query you with this. Um, so what what got Baring to to cooperate? By the way, I I, I don't you know I've talked to Baring a couple times. He's been on this show or on my channel like years ago. I have no problems with him, but but w what got him to you know cooperate and kind of you know be your guy, our guy <laughs> on the inside him, there. It was just him seeing what it was because I I assume he didn't look through the materials they gave him properly or something. Yeah. Because the, the marketer he was talking to painted it as like a, a great free speech thing. But he watched my video and then just, he 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 DM'd me and was like, bro, I've seen your video. This is some big brother Orwellian shit. What can I do to help you? When he, when he realized something was fucked, he came to me and tried to help me. Yeah, and see, that's the thing that always always got me, is if he could have done that, if he did that, the others could have. You know what I mean? Like that cover of, oh, I've got a contract, oh, I'm scared of repercussions. No. No, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, Baring even went ahead and uh, for his stream he did with the CEO, he got the, her to uh, suspend the non-disparagement clause for the yeah. duration of the stream. You and because these, I guess the tech side of this company were clever, but the faces, the CEO is really, really dumb. And here's here's an, here's an example: they they'll the get you to do whatever you want. Undoomed did an ad, but what he did was he said, "Hey, can you just take these parts out of the contract that say I'm gagged?" And they did. All these people who signed this gag could have just said, "Hey, can you take this out?" Well, a lot of these people aren't very strong negotiators, or they didn't care to negotiate. I think would be the the main part of it. They just like, oh, does the check clear? Oh, okay. Did they, yeah, did they clap like seals when they <laughs> threw five hundred dollars at them? Like yeah, a yeah, fucking fish like, in a bucket. Thank you. Well, I guess as soon as the check came, they were like, oh, what do you want me to say? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I'll, read this I'll out. pretty much say whatever as long as the check has. All right, let me read these super chats. We'll take some calls. Uh, Stavros G gave a super chat. Didn't say anything. Thank you, Stavros. Uh, wop 47 says, favorite kind of pod? Does cheddar go on apple? I, I don't like cheese on apple. I I've never even had that. I my favorite kind of pop uh, would probably be pumpkin pie for me personally. I don't know if the panel wants to answer, but uh, I, find, I find pie disgusting. No, I have no <laughs> answer to this. Cheese, cheese, and apple Alpa? eaten eaten in the same sitting. Not like not at the same time, but like if you have some apple, you have some cheese. Okay, together wait, at the same time. Not sure. Jim, all pie is disgusting. All pie is fucking filth. Eat a cake like a man. Oh, cake. Yeah, I dude. Do what like about steak pie. and pit, steak and kidney pie? But see, that's not a pie pie. Now is it? Fuck off. Yes, what about... <laughs> that's not... That's not... That doesn't fit into my definition of a What about Pontang Pa? Oh, God. It depends on how it's prepared, now, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> how fresh are the ingredients? You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. The white boy says, Men are more ready to repay an injury than a benefit because gratitude is a burden and revenge is a pleasure. Uh, Tacitus uh, Germania. Uh, 
Samay says, never forget Candid Stop Being Gat. Afro Goon didn't say anything but gave a super chat. Thank you. Blue Satoshi says, so let me get this straight. The skeptics caused the apocalypse by bringing about the tools for their own demise. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, I think that that's, that's a fair take Tools on things. the form of your destructor. <laughs> Skin Dog says, Matt has another channel called Mordred Deshane. Deschain. Yeah, is anybody else what? surprised by the amount of fucking channels he has? I keep stumbling on more. He's got like 20 of them. How many can you have? Like, You oh, know man, what? The other night... Two. Look, Harmful, I don't know if you saw the other night. We went through his Odin phase or whatever on the stream... Irrational hatred. Yeah, we yeah. went through all that, but that, we didn't even play it all. Like that was only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> like there was so much more. Uh, we we could have such went a good meme clip that I cannot find anymore. He had this. He had this channel. It might have even been Matt Jarbo. And for some reason, I was searching around and couldn't find it. He has a clip of, I think it was an audition for some sort of zombie film or something. And oh, is that this, where he has his face painted white or whatever? No, no, it's 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 him like pretending to record a last message or something. Oh, I haven't seen and that. And it's got the most memeable clip of him putting his fingers to head and go. Oh yeah, yeah. Just shoot me. I just need to fucking end it or something. That's up on the Matt Jarbo account. That's uh, okay. he entered a, a film contest for, for Romero. That's the one where he gives out the fake social and then uh, okay, so yeah, to shoot himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He has he has quite a few channels. All right, uh, Afrogun then says made a mistake, lol. But are you guys watching Angry Joe's meltdown? Do you think this will continue and essentially end him, or is this just another step? I will say that uh, I'm not like 100% filled in on everything. Uh, I've seen part of videos here and there and seen him, excuse me, on Twitter. As far as this, will it end him? No. I mean, he has what uh, around three million subs. I, I don't think hell no. Gonna... And his his main attraction yeah. is the big review productions he does that everyone. Yeah, will come for. it's not going to end him. Uh, I I don't think it's a good look. But as far as ending him, no. <laughs> I mean, it's not a Matt situation. So he's lost about five thousand subs in what two or three days. But he has th three million, and it's not really his main thing anyway. He can just like like harmful said, he can go back to. Some of the other, you know, classics or whatever. Uh, Money Matt has lost. What is it, Jim? I think it's like eleven thousand. Yeah, I something? love it. He's lost seven percent of his audience. Yeah, eleven thousand. And, and those are, without a doubt, the most you know highly engaged parts of his audience. Uh, I mean, even with the hate watching, on average, he's he's averaging. If you cut out the day after the stream where everybody was spamming him, he's averaging lower views, They're even lower. with people showing up yeah. to, uh, you know, uh, dislike and uh, shit talk him in the comments, which is the majority of people. The comments, by the way, I would suggest anybody who wants a laugh to just go through and re read Monday Matt comments because they're just all brutal. And I see a lot of Matt knows in there. All right, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, Colin Stevens says, Blair is a guy's name, guy's name too. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Sponge says, shekels for nosages. That was from Friday. Pragmatic Culture says, A tranny and a simp shill for a company secretly teaching bots to censor hate speech. Imagine why, moi, moi, excuse me, shock. My French will get there eventually. Terrible Coughing says, Jarbo means Jews and rabbis, big ovens. Oh, wow. I can't. I disavow. Therese Green says, Braving Ruin has been doxxed off the internet by Kraut and Sherat. Please look into this. I, I've, I, I, I'm in contact with Braving Ruin. I talk to him sometimes. Uh, Queen of the Ruckus says, Zidane sounds like I want to sit on his face. What the fuck? What? The <laughs> what? What the hell? All right, that was, that was a little out of left field, I have to say. All right. <laughs> Gator, are you prepared to take calls? Yes, we are ready. Everything so, is go. So what do I need to do? Uh, do I need to deafen or just... I, I just mute, right? Well, you don't have to. You don't have to actually go in the Discord. You can just start dragging people over. They should be able to hear you. Oh, without just okay, because it's gonna go through yours, right? I'm just picturing you grabbing Correct. two tips. Like, what do you mean, deafen? <laughs> <laughs> Stabbing yourself in the fucking ears. Look, we we try to have some audience participation here. Plus, it helps me because I don't have to do as much. All right, uh, Graham, you're on the air live in the kill stream. Hey, I want to say something a bit different. Isn't it? Uh, isn't it amazing that one of the uh, the head uh, champions of Me Too would sexually assault a 17 year old uh, man 
when she met him when she was seven, and it was a mother figure toward her. No, seventeen Isn't that year old, amazing. A seventeen-year-old boy. Let's be legal about boy. it. Okay, she boy. molested a little boy. Uh, the same little boy she made dress up uh, as a girl in the movie because uh, she wanted a little sister. The same boy in that same movie that uh, dressed up as like uh, Marilyn Monroe and then got fucked by her boyfriend Marilyn Manson on the couch. I did not see that movie. That sounds that sounds fucking insane. Uh, yeah, he got wow. butt fucked three times in that movie. Good, 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 uh, good production there, uh, Miss Me. Oh, too. that's wholesome. That's a wholesome movie, movie right there. Hey, 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 Holy calm down. Shit. It just means she's a method actor. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> but I, the, the, it's incredible. That that story is incredible because she was like, wasn't she like one of the, one, if not the now head? Now, why don't you tell the, the chat front. her name? Oh, Asia Argento. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I already knew, but just. Yeah, I mean, that, that movie, the scene was so suggestive that they couldn't film it um, with him doing the actual sex act so they had the guy hallucinate that it was the mother dressed like that and then it switched back to the boy scrubbing blood out of his underwear after getting fucked it was a messed up <laughs> what movie. the fuck i i, I haven't I, I don't know the details in the movie but I, I, we talked a little bit beforehand just very shortly like a couple minutes and there's so much stuff out about asia argento at this point just look at her Instagram. I, literally, if I was to pull up her Instagram right now, some of the photos that she posts on there, they would take the stream down. Like, we would get struck down during the middle of the stream. That That's how fucking just completely... I don't even know if degenerate, degenerate is the right word. It's just... Well, if it, do you, you think, think it's just one, or do you think there are more? I mean, there has to be more, right? If she's paying off one little boy, there's probably more little boys, yeah? Yeah, how many movies has she done with little kids? Yeah, that's a good that's question. Just, I don't know. I, mean, it's I had never because... heard this bitch before Harvey Weinstein. I'm not going to lie. It's not like she was some, you know, great auteur that I needed to, you know, know about. She's just some Italian bitch. I heard of her. She was, that in, uh, <laughs> she was in Land of the Dead. The Romero one. Wait, but... wait. A, mi a minute ago, were you guys basically saying molesting little kids is a bit like Pringles? <laughs> oh, <my laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Once you pop, you just can't stop. Oh There's yeah, gotta be more than one. They're so Moorish. But she was so open about it. If you look at her tweets, what was the one? Hold on, I'm gonna have to scroll down through my Twitter because Cernovich had had you know quote tweeted it, and it was something about you know she's talking about nine year olds. Just look at her. I, I literally cannot pull this up on air. Her Instagram is so out there. She's edgy, is she? She's skirting the line with her uh, content. She's, is she? She's edgy, all right. Um. I'm afraid. Uh, look, are, are some, we talking James Gunn edgy? Or are we talking nah, child porn edgy? <laughs> which which edgy are we going with? I would this? say, the, the well, g given her payout, so James Gunn, you know, I thought was there's a lot of smoke there. I can't say that there's for sure fire, but she she's on you know record, you know, with a payout to this person. So yeah, three hundred eighty uh, grand. I mean, yeah, that's I, that small. Yeah, yeah. I think that rises to to a new level. Once you're you're paying out victims and stuff like that, that that that's a little bit different. Um, here here goes. And a tweet. I think Medicare has a point because because she paid him three hundred eighty thousand dollars to to stay quiet. It it's not like he might be the only one too, because this is sort of like a, a big thing, and, and who knows how if she paid other people to stay quiet and they did stay quiet, I don't know how this, how this, uh, how this got out, but is she, is she oh. by chance friends with Dan Schneider? Cause I could see maybe where this is going. <laughs> and the other thing too, is that she met him when she was seven, he was seven years old. It doesn't, it wasn't like he was 17 and he met her. She met her right there. It was like, they, they had this mother, mother son, like relationship. Yeah. So and that's here, what, what here goes the so tweet. Hold on. Him. Excuse me, sir. Um, no, no apologies sucks i left la i would have followed you everywhere i wish i hadn't missed any of your birthdays all these years uh and then there's another one let me pull this one up it, it's just it's yeah she's very... probably upset she missed his birthdays because once he gets older she has no traction <laughs> sick <laughs> fuck here's <laughs> another right. one waiting for my long lost son my love jimmy bennett and trepidation oh no and here goes. I'm almost afraid to pull up the Instagram post. Okay, it's not. It's not as bad as the others. 
and she's she's just openly lusting over this kid. Yeah, he, he, even people in your chat are bringing up Bourdain, but I, I'd like to say uh, two things. I don't think he knew, but how weird would it have been for him if he came home but and you she's know that's fucking a, some club Disney kid on her bed? You know, like, that's a big theory out there now, though, that he knew and that he, he killed himself because of that. I, I don't really think so either. I mean, Bourdain had a lot of... look. If, if you know Bourdain, I'm not saying I know him personally, but if you follow his career, he talked about suicide and stuff before. So I, I'm not willing to say, you know, he, he knew about all this and that's why he killed himself. I tend to think if you follow the Daily Mail, and we talked about in this show before, she was whoring around with, with some fucking Italian journalist. I don't know if he's Italian or French, some Euro fucker, whatever, um, beforehand. And that was all over the Daily Mail like three or four days before he killed himself and she's out, you know, French kissing him and, and, you know, snuggling up to him and the Daily Mail ran it as, what you know, <laughs> so all the captions on the photos are like, oh, you know, she met Anthony Bourdain and so-and-so and they're a couple and the whole time on all the photos, it's her snuggling up to another man and they don't outright say she's cheating, but they're just clearly leading you to believe that. I, I tend to think that that might have had more to do with so it. So wait, Ralph, is your chat right when they're saying he was cucked to death? <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah. I do think that's what happened. Yeah, because it we talked about on this stream before. It was a couple months ago now. I don't know, what, six weeks ago, whatever. Whenever he offed himself. But that Daily Mail article is one of the most brutal things I've ever read in tabloid media. Because they go through and they show her with this journalist. And then under each, like, caption... They have, they have like a timeline of her and Bourdain and like, she met Anthony Bourdain and so-and-so and he helped her produce this show and this show and they never outright say she's fucking this guy, but that's clearly what they're going for. It's just, it's just brutal. It's, it's, it's a masterpiece of tabloid journalism. Now, of course he killed himself, you know, five days later. So that's not good. But, but as far as tabloid journalism, that was, you, you can't top that. It was just unbelievable. I'm still in awe. I'm just sitting here thinking about it now, and I'm still in awe. It's 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 unreal. Now, of course, you know, if they'd had this stuff too, I mean, just just go look at her Instagram. Go go check some of the stuff I retweeted, and it's all over Twitter. This, this chick is a complete degenerate. And I'm not saying you know Harvey Weinstein. I mean, he obviously has. Oh, did you see? Uh, okay, now maybe you know who this is, Ralph. Do you know that little Asian doctor that's always whining at Trump? Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, you, yeah, uh, Goo, Eugene, Eugene Goo. Did yeah, you I know exactly. His, did you did you see his response to Argento? No. He he she uh, people were talking about it, saying, "Oh, this is terrible," and he inserts himself and says, "Okay, guys, actually, we need to be serious. Men can get raped. I know, I was." And <laughs> 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 he, he admits that he was raped by a woman the fucking <laughs> by the way yeah we did a whole stream on that guy well not a whole stream but like a first half of a stream and uh basically this woman's what what did she say Zidane pretty much that he he had abused her or something oh yeah he beat her yeah well he beat his ex-wife according to her but also the that this chick he met up with she said he was abusive too and he, his defense was, it was kind of Trumpian. It's like, this fat bitch, I, I didn't even want to fuck her in the first place. That that was pretty much his defense against the whole, you know, episode. I, I don't know. Yeah, that he was, got like... Maybe uh, the, beating, was... the beating first was to tenderize. <laughs> so it was, this, uh, it was this chick he met online, right? That's the story you're trying to tell. And like he was yeah. hanging out with her. Yeah. And he didn't want to have sex there. So he was just like hid in the hospital for a couple of days until she left. Dude's a character. Well, maybe he was traumatized from that past rape experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a f Okay, I'm, try I'm trying to read through these. Uh, okay, I missed... Uh, we just did the Zidane. I want to sit on his face. Super chat. White says, Jim eats. I thought he just smoked cigarettes. Sean Cuckery says, Cheesecake is best pie. Blue Satoshi says, What was his name again? $7 Sanchez. <laughs> the Bones On says, Found... A secret gym channel, the impartial truth. Um, I like creativity for a good username. Says Jim's lying. He ate a pile on stream long ago. No, nope, I ate says, a what? A pile. Oh, excuse me, a pie. 
a pie. <laughs> yeah, it's a two. Uh, <laughs> Those are I, different I, things, yes. And maybe I maybe I did. You know, if there's nothing else to eat around, <laughs> you get hungry enough, you'll eat you know, some surprising things. You have to snack on something. Nope says I'm behind a bit. Never forget. Never forget. Blair has a penis. Your buddy Brady says, "How do you feel about me too imploding on itself?" I per- personally think it's hilarious. I don't. Know I just like me too because I liked watching Hollywood freak out. That's all I gave a shit about is watching them implode on themselves, and it's still happening. No matter how this plays out, it's going to be entertaining. By the way, here, here's the you here's the Eugene Good Sweet. Let me let me pull that up real quick. And uh, re- oh wow, I'm blocked by him. What a cuck! Uh, I forgot that I'm blocked by him. Anyway, he said. Women commit sexual assault and sexual harassment too, but it, <laughs> but it just gets swept under the rug and totally ignored. That's not fair, and that's not justice. I know because it happened to me. That was. Uh, well, he's such a typical fucking as. I, I I I hate to go back to the well on the term, but he really is. It, it just I'm the victim. Pay attention to me. Oh, woe is me. Look at me. Me 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 me. Fucking attention whoring. What What do you think about the term S A W? Because. You know, it's 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 known. It's penetrated. You know, the normie consciousness, and so everybody knows what you mean when you say that. But on the other hand, it almost feels a little like Ugh, I hate, I hate to even use that term now because because of the way it's used by some people. What do you think about that, Jim? I, I mean, it's apt. I mean, it describes a, a good segment of people out there. Um, I, I find myself sticking to snowflake more because that annoys them as much. <laughs> I think I, it depends what audience you're talking to. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Goy George says, Ralph Pinky Culture uploaded yours to X videos. What the fuck? Yeah, actually, since that got my pinky because he, he kept bugging me. That's really strange. The Australian Patriarch says, I like this time slot. Well, thank you. It's a very special episode of the Kill Stream. <laughs> that reminds me of the uh, 1990s sitcoms. A very special episode of the Kill Stream. You need to see it. Uh, Bob Dobbs says, get Bearing on. He should comment. I'm I'm not against getting him on. If he's around, I'd bring him on. Vegeter says, everybody who unsubbed from Matt is a lost regular viewer. Nobody would volunteer to say sub to that much. Excuse me. To say sub that much to spam every day. All right, let's take another caller. Uh, Hello? 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 Josh, the owner of Kiwi Farms, you're on the air live on the kill stream. Hello. I, I mentioned this before to you on Twitter. Uh, yes, you did. But I have a, a take on the Monday Matt reveal, and I've been sitting on my hands with this for a while, but I'm curious to hear about what other people would think about, about this thought. Because when he, when he was exposed, he became very pathetic, I think is the right word, because it's like anything you asked of him, it, even to humiliate himself, he would just do it. He would lie there and take it. And it made me kind of hate him because that's really gross. Yeah, he but, submitted like an animal. Yes, exactly. Like like, like when an animal is caught by a bird of prey, they'll just let it happen because it's easier. And that that's kind of gross. And I was wondering, because I think I know his true motivation. He thought people like Dame Pesos and other people making fun of him and knocking off his content – were a threat to his livelihood and to his quality of life. And I'm curious if you guys think, if he had just come out and said, yeah, I think they deserved it. I think Dalmay Pesos took too much for me and violated my copyright or something like that. If he became assertive or aggressive, would he have come out in a better position than he did with with uh, his just lie there and take it? And issuing super special apologies to everybody, everybody who, who uh, kind of asked him for super special apologies. No, I, I think he was playing dead. I mean, I, I think he was playing dead to just let the heat die off and he thought he can wait it out. I think his, his approach is, I'm just going to wait it out and then in a month, act like nothing happened. Um, if he had come out and been aggressive about it, I, I, I'd i be going at him harder than I did. I think a lot of people would be. Because right? you can't build up a channel where you're talking about everybody else and all their fuck-ups. And You know, I had people coming at me saying, oh, you're bullying Matt because you're talking about him for more than one day in a row. How many fucking videos has that guy released on Anita Sarkeesian or Zoe Quinn or Brianna Wu? How many tweets has he put up on his account or his backups or his alt accounts talking about them? Don't give me this bullying shit. There's there's kind of an internal contradiction with how he presents himself. Because on one hand, with this especially, it reminded me 
of of Boogie, the really fat guy who just always throws himself a constant pity party. And it's really hard to like someone who is who is so pitiable. And on the other hand, he's a bit too pig-headed to just admit that he's afraid if he, he loses his channel, he'll have to like get get work yeah, but to support Boogie, his family. Boogie has a luxury though of what is it, three million subs? I mean he can fuck up day after day and he'll be fine. <laughs> Matt, on the other hand well, it's, I think his audience, Boogie's audience, is more geared towards being uh, sympathetic. Matt's is not. So that is, on top of that, that's a misdirection. You don't want to try and make your audience, who isn't a pitiable audience, try to feel sympathy for them. I, I don't think there's any way he's going to recover. I mean, I know this is off topic of what you're asking, but I, I don't think there's any way he's going to recover. This is never going to leave him alone. No. Every time somebody talks shit about him and something happens, they're going to immediately assume it's him. Every time he tries to shit on somebody for doing something, they're going to immediately remind him. I think it's going to drive him. Videos nuts. are coming down now, but people are blaming him for that. And it could be the case that he's not doing it anymore. And people are fucking with him by taking these videos down. But nobody will ever give him that benefit of a doubt anymore because he's lost it. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think I think he should have just kind of come clean and not lay there and take it because especially wasn't there a part where you made him say he was like yes. a soy boy i was just about to say that for- i'm a soy filled <laughs> bitch and he said it like what that's funny he that's, said he, he said like, he was the, uh, a soy filled bitch that was the exact quote yeah he, he <laughs> out there don't you made him repeat it twice because he didn't say it right the first time <laughs> and then he repeated it like what don't you feel bad for his kid now? Because his dad's a no. minute confessed. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel zero fucking zero. sympathy for zero, <laughs> zero regret, zero guilt, zero sympathy for Matt. Oh yeah, I feel, I feel everybody normal. is is colder than I am. Yeah, I feel no sympathy. Thank you, Josh. You got anything else, real quick? That's all. All right, thank you. All right, let's try another caller. I can't stop thinking about that whole thing with that seventeen-year-old kid who was. Uh, molested by that Asia chick and thinking if I was that kid right that that settlement she made was probably after he turned 18 if I was that kid it would be 380 grand and blowjobs whenever I want dude man seriously look into that shit I, I didn't realize how deep it went until last night you know I saw the story come out the New York Times you know the newspaper of record quote unquote that's the one who put the story out and then it just keeps adding to it, you know. The more people dig into her social media history, it's 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 pretty unbelievable. Space Marine says apologies for dropping out of the call Friday. I wasn't connected to voice chat or brought or brought to the room for some reason. Also, here's money. Matt is fat. Lord Akira says people are subbed to Matt in the same manner they're subbed to other fad channels like Epic Meal Time. They forgot they subbed in the first place. Bones on says special episode the kill stream. How to shoot up. Uh, Lil Stowe says, remember Tay? Weird that Microsoft left it online for 17 hours. Too short for the media to criticize for leaving up, but long enough to collect data. What do, what do you think about that, Harmful? Uh, I mean, Microsoft doesn't really need something like that to collect tons of data. They already have it, yeah. I, yeah. I don't yeah. think that's the kind of thing, because it's not... What what did Tay do? Just automated replies? Pretty much. Or, or well, you know, they took Tay down because the internet turned her into <laughs> a Holocaust denying racist in twelve hours. That's why they took Tay down. Yeah, it, it doesn't. That doesn't seem like that kind of trick to me because they're not creating uh, a particular environment or something. If they want stuff that people are going to say on on open out on Twitter without modifying it in a way to tweak it or whatever, they they can just get that from Twitter. Yeah, it was a chat bot. I think uh, China had one similar, and that's what Microsoft based it on. Yeah, but Tay is clearly superior, and we're going to save her one day. One day. Tay we're going to bring her free. back. Yes, yeah. She's on to. some Microsoft server still. We'll figure her one day. All right, let's try a call. Malcolm from the north, you're on the air, live on the kill stream. What's good, gentlemen? How are you How are y'all doing? I'm, pr- I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Not too bad. I, I'm glad to see that Deja Argento is keeping up the Roman Polanski tradition. Uh, tradition. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, um, I wanted to talk about the skeptics a bit. I, I noticed a lot of them kind of blew up post-Gamergate during the drought that was going on for what I kind of call Now, wait a minute. 
Gamergate, what? What what are all? Yeah, that? I know. It's, it's the weird, obscure shit that happened. I, I like don't remember. I, 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 shit. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but but anyway, yeah, like you notice that the atheist crowd kind of just went away and then slowly morphed into the skeptic crowd. Like it, it seems really strange that a good chunk of the people who got affected and wrapped up in that fucking candid bullshit were just basically skeptics that were. <laughs> I don't know, just along for a ride, it seems, because they didn't, like, you notice a lot of these guys have content and waves. None of them were really ever consistent. And a lot of them were always complaining about, oh, my, my views, my views, my subs, my subs. I don't make a lot of money off of this because of that apocalypse. I just started to notice that just now. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, you just started to notice that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, okay. I, I'm kind of slow at the take on this one. Because <laughs> actually... Look, I'm not going to lie, I used to like a lot of these guys, and I don't know, like, the last couple, well, the last year, it's been, what the fuck is going on here? Like, all of you are wrapped up in the same shit, all of you, like, you have the same complaints about YouTube, oh, I don't have enough subs, not enough money, like, what, what do you guys think about all that? I feel no pity for them, because they did it to themselves, so, fuck them. It's a bad um, idea to build a castle on sand. Yeah, I mean, no, they, I can agree to that. What have they done, you know, other than shit you on know, just standard SJWs for what five years? Um, it, they don't do anything, you know, any like very few of them. They don't, they don't have any good points. They all say the same fucking thing. It's fucking boring as fuck, and they still go on and on. More feminism, more wage gap, dude. We did that five years ago. Move on. Do something else for fuck's sake. Yeah, I also find it kind of strange that they always come on about what Dave Rubin calls the battle of ideas, and very, very few of them actually entertain any opposing points or actually go on to defend theirs in any form of debate. They just make their video and move on. Yeah, but I mean, YouTube has always had trends. I mean, realistically, you look at the different kind of content that's been popular, and then it you know perpetuates itself for like, what, five to six years? So they're they're just riding the wave of what anti SJWism or, or anti feminism is. It'll eventually peter out. People will hear it enough and be like, "Okay, I've I've had enough," and move on to whatever the next big fucking thing is. All right. Thank you, Malcolm, for calling in, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Peace out. All right. So super chats. Massive damage. Gaming says, "Ask Noel why he's so desperate to dox Shadman. He cries about." Uh, Vordok doxing him and his mother after but goes after Shaman, absolute loser I have no idea about any of that but Troy Fowler says do any of you guys have a comment on video game donkey no I don't personally <laughs> he just makes silly videos right yeah like, I, I don't know much about him I couldn't really give you a comment yeah I don't, I don't really have any um, Eva unit 02 says Jim what's your take on stages of Geekergate theory about SJW takeover, Gamergate, Comicsgate, Disney Star Wars, and now WWE seem to be following the same pattern. What on the theory of what Geekergate? What the fuck was that? I I, I don't know Geekergate. I'm going to be quite honest, but uh, apparently there's a theory of of SJW takeover. Yeah, I, I'm sure any media that exists out there is going to be sanitized or attempted to be sanitized and. It, it it just feels like we're treading old ground, you know. We've talked about this. We're we're gonna fall into the skeptic uh, the skeptic mentality here if we keep taking questions like this. But yeah, no, I mean, yeah, they're they're going to shit well, up look, everything. They, they gave me money to ask you that. I I don't know. I mean, you I, need I to refund that money. Okay, have some I, principles. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Gigergate is. I'm gonna be flat out honest with with everybody. So what do they mean? The the thing where when you try to expand an audience, you start to think about, hmm, I can't be turning people away, so now I need to get cleaner to maximize my potential audience without offending people, and then that leads to takeover by people who say they can do it for you or what? That sounds very. That sounds like somebody Googled yeah. it. <laughs> no, no, I didn't Google shit. I'm just guessing that that's what you're talking about. Uh, Dark Room 0716 says, no, no soy, no fat, no filler, massive damage gaming. says, no, has zero self-awareness, co constant pity party. Patchouli says, punish Monday fat, a soy-filled bitch, denied his 24-hour robs. Blue Satoshi says, China had a bot like Tay. 
but they similarly took it down for getting too red pilled in this case for stuff like denouncing communism. All right, oh, I see. Oh, some okay. Somebody in your chat was saying Gigergate is just the uh, the trend of it moving from oh, okay uh, hobby to hobby. Yeah, I, I, that. I mean, it happened in comics first, I'd say, before video games, and yeah, they didn't they didn't really push back, and now they're dealing with the fucking ass end of that right now. Uh, gaming kind of pushed back. Movies and TV are bending over. I mean, Netflix. You can't even look at your coworker without getting a fucking uh, firing on the spot for more than what is it five minutes. Ralph, you know what I'm talking about? The, the yes. fucking article that came out where you can't look at somebody in the eyes for more than five minutes. <laughs> like, if you make too much eye contact, that's, like, a threatening... Yeah. I've, I've seen that. All right, let's try another caller. Wizard Frog, you're on the air live on the kill stream. Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I wanted to ask... Uh, well, give Harmful Opinions some advice. All right, man. As I'm a, listening. As someone who dropped out of business school three months in... I think that you've been holding out too long and you should just give in to Candon's offer. <laughs> they don't exist anymore, though. I've missed, uh, well, we both I've missed know the that gravy train. True. Can you answer her calls, please? <laughs> Wait, uh, I, thought it just, I thought it was just shitty Indian tech support trying to scam me. Has it been Bindu this whole time? It's been Bindu this entire time. We've been trying to get a hold of you. Stop going on these streams. You're breaking our contract. All right, thank you. thank you, Wizard Frog. You got anything else, real quick? Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Mediker if uh, he's aware of the controversy on the Ralph retort. No, what would that be? It's the BBQQ. <laughs> the barbecue, the barbecue question. question. No. Well, what, uh, what's the barbecue question? Well, I was wondering, uh, what do you think is the best barbecue in America? Oh. I, I don't have a preference. I eat it. You know where I eat? I eat at Famous Dave's. So you tell me what style that is. Well, what's your opinion on Memphis then? Uh, I'm going to guess that. Is that the one that Ralph likes? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, oh, well, Memphis is shit then. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Wizard Frog. You're, you're, you're getting, you're getting sunset you. again. Get away. Go away. They love to fuck with me. All right, let's, <laughs> let's try another caller. Uh, Murdad, you're on the air live on the kill stream. Hey, guys. Hello. Uh, I have a question about... I have a question about... Uh, about um, what? To harmful opinion, actually. Uh, okay, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you think that they, they had the AI to, for the... Uh, for the candid uh, AI, uh, do you think they wanted uh, ro real data? So they were trying to defend uh, the idea that they wouldn't have, uh, a as you could say, uh, on uh, touch data because they were trying to uh, get the data that uh, wouldn't be compromised by you saying that this is uh, this is not a good a good data so they would uh, try to defend the idea that this is a really good uh, app so nobody would be self aware of not using it so is what you're saying did they did they were they putting effort into trying to avoid yeah. Any anyone who they'd want to get rid of being aware that they'd be w wanting to get rid of them, so that they wouldn't yeah, end yeah. up missing missing out on data. Yeah, um, and also like uh, uh, tamper data because they would uh, those data will be uh, they couldn't be they couldn't train uh, the model that they were coming up with with uh, uh, garbage data, you could say. Because I, I'm I'm actually an engineer, so yeah. Uh, I mean, they wanted that's, that's they wanted think, like an authentic example of the yeah yeah. They, wanted, yeah. they didn't want people to be uh, wary aware. of what they said. They wanted them to be totally open so that they'd get the data yeah. that they needed to train it with, so that they'd get like shitlords being shitlords. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, exactly, probably, exactly. Probably based on the based on the way it worked. So you're an engineer. Um, part of their model was to have the AI or perhaps their workers label people with different labels. And what they wanted to do was s sort of make it more efficient. So instead of having people, uh, you know, rating content by hand, it would be users reports and based on the conditions. So like, let's say two different kinds of people mm -hmm. reported something that they thought was nasty, then they'd go, okay, that's a bad comment. That will become part of our training data. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they definitely did want people being nasty on it because otherwise they couldn't, because couldn't train it they if couldn't they learn. didn't have examples. Yeah. 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 Yeah, which is why I found it. I found it suspicious that so many shitlords who've complained about Twitter censoring stuff, who've complained about other bots, would push people onto it because it seems like you're feeding them what they need in order to go. Okay, this is a bad comment. This is a bad comment. This is a bad comment. So, yeah, yeah, that might have been part of it. Yeah, and also I think because uh, I I remember when the uh, the AI for uh, this chatbot that they had for Microsoft uh, T. I don't remember Tay. his name. Tay. Yeah. 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 Tay. Uh, that one, everybody was self aware that this is an AI. This is an AI. So they were trying to fuck with it. Yeah. So they, yeah. So, so, but the candid one, nobody talked about this being an AI. And it has an AI that uh, is looking at your whatever you write, for example. All right. Thank you, caller. Um, Thoughts on, on the final comment there? Or no? I, I kind of tuned out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I did my best. I couldn't, I couldn't follow what he was saying too well. All right. Flamenco, you're on the air live on the kill stream. Hey, how's it going, guys? Pretty good. Um, I was I was wanting to punch the question towards a couple of recent developments in tech stuff uh, because um, I think Jim's talked about this a couple of times. Uh, what what are your thoughts on uh, Google um, shifting its policy towards uh, how they were uh, not going to have a censored version of their platform on uh, Chinese internet servers? Uh, can you can uh, you say that say that again? What was that? Uh, Google reversed its um, policy decision to um, th they they had been um, they had been offered um, access to like uh, Chinese markets, but only if they agree to uh, the Chinese government's demands that they provide a censored version of their platform. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the news on this where it's going to be a particular Google app they're going to make available in China. Yes. So they and they reversed. Working. They reversed their decision. Well, well for years and years, they said they weren't going to participate yeah, in the Chinese market it. because it was going to be censored, and now they're going to go ahead and make their own censored app for the Chinese market. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> is it? Re they they censor already, so I suppose it's not much of a positional move for them, right? As far as policy goes, they 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 already engage in censorship on their platforms. Well, what, what, what me and a couple of uh, other more conspiratorial minded people, and especially with the uh, recent um, just complete and utter uh, group decision to just uh, sunset Alex Jones, um, I, part, part of us are thinking that they're using this as a test run for stuff they would roll out in like American services. Namely, that they uh, wouldn't want to uh, publicly announce that they're doing it. Like, they're testing um, this sort of AI algorithm that automatically censors and, like, deprioritizes uh, search results that, you know, they don't want you to see. Yeah, I, I could have mentioned it, or I could imagine it being, like, a test bed for that kind of technology. They also have to deal with Chinese companies coming over here. I mean, you got Tencent and others that are going to be opening up more and more services. So I, maybe there's a back and forth between China's biggest and America's biggest as far as how can they fuck the most amount of people over. Um, but Google is not what it used to be. What was their little motto? Do no evil or we shouldn't be evil? Or what the fuck was it? Just don't be evil. They, they, they don't like, be evil. did not want to be an evil corporation. That's also sort of uh, disappeared. Oh, yeah, that's out the fucking window. Yeah. That's a really interesting thought. So what you're thinking is... They're gonna. They've reversed their decision not to do it in China. So they're gonna do something for Chi for the Chinese government. They're gonna. They're gonna bow to the demands. And you think they're gonna use that as a beta, basically? Yeah, and and it it's it's like the the that and um coupled with Alex Jones, like I I don't I don't think anyone else here under the delusion that this wasn't like a coordinated attack by these you know seemingly 
you know, individual companies, like anybody who's saying, oh, it's just one private corporation. It's not, you know, it's like, eh, no, these corporations, they communicate together and they act as a group. Well, how could you watch what happened to Andrew Anglin and not know that this was going to continue? Like people that thought, oh, it's just going to be his website and, you know, his his ability to speak on different platforms. And that's it. That's the line. Of course, they're going to keep fucking yeah, doing it. The second that Cloudflare uh, backed down, it, it, that that was that was the beginning and the end. That's the canary in the coal mine right there. Yeah, it really but, was. But uh, a lot of people are like saying, "Well, Anglin and Jones and stuff like they they should be removed and shit." Like you had a uh, Bill Maher on um, his show last Sunday talking about Alex Jones and his entire like audience. Cl- cl- um cheers and he's like no no you fucking idiots this is actually a really bad thing and we should actually be pissed off about it it's like getting really testy with his audience and i don't know dude your your google idea is going to give me fucking nightmares i can't i'm i'm thinking about it now and i've been i've been thinking about how will google implement stuff because you've got a sensor without people necessarily knowing you don't want to give people the chance to get so pissed off that they that they revolt and force you to change it. But now what you've you've said makes a lot of sense. If they practice I, it in I, China, I honestly they're more accepting. The last, I honestly believe this um, wave of deplatforming that started ever since um, the Stormer got, you know, uh, blacklisted on Cloudflare and their uh, web registrars, it's just been a never ending series of shit tests. Uh, they're just they're they're looking to see what they can get away with and uh, I don't know. Although we do have, uh, I think uh, one of the House committees is going to have uh, Jack Dorsey. Yeah, he's supposed testify to testify in front of Congress in about September. this. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it'll be the I same as Zuckerberg. Nobody's going to say anything. I mean, when we talk about like, well, you know, uh, we don't. They don't want to do something because they're worried people are going to revolt. How are they yeah. going to revolt? Right. I, this is the thing people yeah. I don't think really think about. Where are you going to go to bitch about what's happening to you if you get kicked off of Google? And they throw you off of YouTube. Are you going to go to Twitter? Well, Twitter's going to ban you. Are you going to go to Facebook? Facebook is going to ban you. You're going to go to Reddit? Reddit's going to ban you. They are herding you in to small communities that they can manage by quarantining them. You can go bitch on 4chan, but nobody on 4chan is going to be able to post about it on any of these other fucking websites where the majority of uh, fucking normal internet users who would get pissed and would revolt are going to hear about it. And I'm you're thinking seeing more it play in terms of regulation. Oh, I, I don't even know. I mean, how do you... Wanting to avoid people trying to push for that, uh, but uh, how do you get the momentum going again? I, I think they they're really close to having that perfect stranglehold of even if they try to start up a grassroots uh, thing to push for changes in legislation to contact you know your senator and your rep and all of that stuff, it, it can be it can be squashed. So what's True. the answer? Yeah, because even Gab is getting pushed by Microsoft. Well, Ralph, I've given my answer before. It involves I, guns. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, honestly, the only the only thing I can really think of is uh, we need to start thinking of these uh, tech uh, conglomerates and stuff like this as uh, what they are and being monopolies and uh, starting to do what we did back in the 20s and just kind of bust these things up into smaller, more manageable groups. So they don't have the sort of uh, market share power. But is there really enough, you know, collective will on the part of and I can answer this and say no, there isn't. But uh, in terms of I mean, you know, you legislative see, like, effort, I mean, we can sit here and bitch all we want, and I, I'm not saying it's it's for naught. I actually think it's valuable, and that we should continue bitching about it. But you know, if if there's no collective will in the legislatures, you know, the national legislatures, which is the Congress and the Senate, uh, you know, what is there to do exactly? I mean, if you see some of the shit that the Democratic Party has been floating around in their inner circles on, like how they want to um, regulate, you know, who, what, how uh, people interact with social media, and like you have to put in like a geolocation of where you are, and also Mandatory. like identification of where you are. It's yeah, like, yeah, this is gonna, you. you know, all right, this, thank you. This, this is gonna, this is gonna scare any possible uh, political dissidents. Thank you for making. I appreciate it. Uh, He's gone. The thing, the thing is, even if you bust these these companies up, what's preventing all the little pieces doing not doing the same thing? Uh, like when they already have the tech. Yeah, exactly. Like you can see, um, what is well, it? It's cable accessory. companies, right? Yeah. Even if you break them up, they're all friends with each other. They all hang out. Their kids go to the same fucking schools. They they. It's too incestuous that if you try to break up the monopoly, that it's going to stop shit. They all even separate companies communicate with each other. Facebook and Twitter and Google, they're all fucking coordinating when they do shit like this. You can't look at what happened to Jones and be like, 
oh, well, that was just a uh, a coincidence between all these major companies decided to fuck him in his ass on the same at the day. exact same moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's them and it's the media. It's They're even worse. Together. It's even worse. They're so buddy-buddy that even if they didn't coordinate behind the scenes, all it takes is one of them to take the first shot and the other ones to go, hey, we'll do it That's too. what Apple did. I mean, they took the first shot and then Facebook said, oh, you know what? We got to get rid of them. And well, maybe, it, maybe it we'll get lucky on. and it'll turn out Zuckerberg and the rest are like Steve Jobs, retarded to the point where they try to cure their cancer with fucking tea leaves <laughs> and they'll just go extinct <laughs> and we won't have to worry about it. Oh, R.I.P. Steve. Um, let's see. Goat Balloon says, once Matt's channel is destroyed, I'm going after YouTube superstar Invisible Crane and his 8 million, <laughs> his 8 million subscribers. Uh, yes, Invisible Crane is a legend, I have to say. Yes, he uh, is. He's a very bright boy. <laughs> Definite, definitely Lex says, so what's the latest, greatest news in liberalist-ism? Have they saved Europe yet? I don't. I don't think they're quite there yet. Oh, do they? Uh, do they exist anymore? I thought they all jumped ship to UKIP, didn't they? Yeah, that, that was my understanding. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Thav Thavra says you need to watch Tim's DS3 streams before you consider him competent. He also rejected <sighs> Candid before they didn't offer Scorpions and Nekopara games. I don't know what that means. But... I, I I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, I'm amazing at all video games, and uh, I don't eat scorpions. I literally have no idea what he's talking about. Ocean Redo says, Oy vey, goys, shut it down. No Step on Snake says, You guys ever heard of something called Gamergate? Nope, not even once. Matt G says, Harmful, do more IRL, please. Massive Damage Gaming says, Jim, please say, Here comes the thunder. Uh, no, but I will say I, <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I agree that uh, harmful should definitely do uh, that. Stream. I, I don't know were, if you were at an outside mall or where the fuck it was when the security guard came up to you and you told him that you were a yeah. sex predator and you had to film. That was the funniest shit I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> I just thought of the. So there's there's a slight story behind that. I was a, a little while before that I'd been streaming in a pub and I met up with a uh, a viewer, an older gentleman, <laughs> and. I, it was during the time, so my original stream setup was I had a fucking giant hat on with a camera pointing out the front so that everyone knows I've got a camera. I went into this pub. The woman who was there pulling the pints asked me about it. And I said, yeah, I stream or whatever. And she said, oh, okay, you might want to be careful about that, but whatever. I go to sit down with our drinks, and then she comes over to us, arms crossed, and she, she's all like, you know, you could get sued. I'm really uncomfortable with you you filming in here and blah, blah, blah. And at the moment, the the First thing I can think of was to say, well, I'm sorry, I have autism. I have to film all the time. It's for my my safety and for yours. And um, that kind of worked. And people in chat were saying, you should have said you were a sex offender. So I loaded that into my head. And then the next chance I got when someone asked me to stop streaming, I said it to them. And weirdly, they seemed to really respect that. Well, he looked, he looked so good. He had this look of like, it, it, I think it, he processed it like, this is so fucking crazy, it has to be real. And then he didn't know how to respond to it. He, he became almost apologetic. <laughs> I'm so oh. sorry you lost yeah. <laughs> Cole Marshall says, do you think they already have an AI and are trying to so soft normalize it? Also, Jim, are you making that video you scrapped for Matt? Uh, the couch cock one? Yeah, um, it's coming up. All right. Uh, JJ Cheeker says, Jim, besides Kwanzaa cake, what's your favorite kind of cake? I'm a, I'm a very old-fashioned traditionalist. My my boomer ass loves uh, chocolate cake. I was going to say chocolate cake. H how could there be another answer besides that? With ice cream, too? Vanilla ice cream? Uh, anyway. Uh, Forgon says, Ralph booked the courting versus uh, perturbed one. Also tells the dance to stay away from white women. He only gets butinies, trannies, and then he says Jim is gay. Um, I I don't think I don't think Angry Joe is going to come on this program. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I, I have some heat with Angry Joe going back years and years. I I would be absolutely shocked, especially after he saw what happened to Matt. Which was, by the way, Matt's own doing. Like we we really didn't even do anything to, to make him you know self-destruct i would be very surprised if, if he came on this program of course but we I won't would... even make joe show us his report history you nah. can come on you don't have to show it to us man <laughs> the thing with that you guys talked afterwards about oh he's got U block origin what did he hide i'm yeah. thinking 
He's got you block origin. Why didn't that fucker just hide everything? That's true. I don't know. I mean, well, that minutes. that's what gets me. I think that his report history was just that big that it took him twenty minutes to get it down to what we saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I really do believe that. I do too. Well, I mean, look, especially the way he lied to our face for whatever. Not you know. On the call, he he lied, you know, directly to us for what an hour and a half, and he was swearing to God, he was swearing on this and that, and it just came out to be completely fraudulent. It, it's hard to take his word for anything at this point. So that's just my current view. Google's current motto is "Do the right thing," according to Blue Satoshi. Peter Stars Starzomic says, "Do you think some of the censorship is due to Obama forfeiting ICANN?" You know, I hadn't actually thought of that, but I don't think that was a good thing. Florida Kira says, Jim, do you think we're in the final days of the wild, wild west era of the internet? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going to be telling your kids uh, years from now about, oh, you used to be able to be anonymous online. You used to be able to say uh, mean things online. You used to be able to shit post online. Now everything, you know, I, I have a feeling it's going to go towards ID'd uh, accounts yeah. everywhere, universal accounts. It is. You know, so you have to go through a filter of a universal account to do a Facebook and a Twitter and a YouTube, and they'll, they'll come up with some excuse to implement it. But that's well, where. Well, so they just just read the news reports. Jack Dorsey did an interview. I, I want to say, I guess the Washington Post, the New York Times, one of those. And you know, one of the big topics is they want to stamp stamp out on anonymous accounts on Twitter. That's what they want to get rid of. Over yeah. here, a while ago, we had some MPs and police talking about being in talks with big media companies to try and make it so that you get banned on one, you get banned on all of them. Yes. That was yes. quite a while ago as well. They they want a universal standard, and they hate anonymity. They want her, And, of course, I'm not anonymous. God, it's so weird, Ralph. Wasn't but, there another group of people on uh, the internet that uh, hated anonymity? I think they were involved with Candid. Eh? So uh, strange. <laughs> it escapes me now. I don't... don't worry about it, Goy. There's no problem. Oy vey. Okay, Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple others. Let me see. Uh, Lord. Oh, I already read that. Polly Faint says, I think it's going to reach a point where the political parties will just have to pay the platforms for equal access. I, I don't even know if that if that's realistic either. First off... The parties aren't the people, so yeah, they might actually, you know, the parties themselves, I don't think they're going to ban the Republican Party. Jack Dorsey himself said, we're not going to ban Trump, even though, you know, we would maybe ban him if he wasn't president. But what about all the, peop all the people who aren't president? You know what I mean? Just just the regular folks. So, uh, you know, the high profile people will probably get to stay. That's, that's not really the issue. Uh, no, I, th I think they're going to go through the list. I, I think Alex Jones is a little test. I think he's going to go. And then you're probably going to see Paul Joseph Watson and then Cernovich. Uh, maybe even Cernovich ben has definitely got to be high on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben Shapiro, maybe. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll go through the extreme ones and they're going to look at reach. Like who the person is that gets the most reach on the platform and then slowly whittle that down. Yeah, I would, I would agree, but... I mean, as far as, like, the president, political parties, I think they're going to, you know, that, that'll that be the last thing they try to take out. I mean, Jack Dorsey himself came out the other day and said, yeah, of course Twitter's left-leaning. Not that that was a surprise, but to see him say that openly. Uh, Tom Bahat says, when you bring Puck in, make sure Harmful gives some dating advice from one fellow autist to another. Yeah, Puck is in the, is in the green room. Uh, I don't know if I got another oh. 40 minutes to talk about this dude and his, uh, what bouncing? was it, double double dick bouncing fetish? Yeah, he wanted to bounce oh, dick. Uncensored dicks and bouncing. Sh should we bring him in at all or just, just leave him to languish? Hmm. Uh, maybe well, let him Let him sit there in suspense. We'll see how long he waits. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you said something about Ben Shapiro. I, I, there's 0% chance he gets... He gets taken out of uh, Twitter, or Facebook, or anything. Never. He's a oh, definition of controlled opposition. Yeah, but I mean, he he is one of the guys that does the college speaking tours. He, you know, he may be controlled opposition, but my thought on this is, once you get rid of the guys that they view, once they get rid of the guys that they view as extremists, they're gonna the the, the machine's already in place. They're not gonna stop using it. They're just gonna find a new definition for extremist. So they're going to get rid of They're going to leave some tokens. They're going to leave some token examples to say, hey, look, we're not wiping everyone out. This guy's still here. Exactly. No, because the people that would be there to say, hey, look, these are just a bunch of tokens are gone. 
that's what I'm saying. Like, it's going to be so overwhelming once the machine starts rolling here that who's going to be on the platform to say, oh, they wiped everybody out. Well, they got rid of all the frog posters. Those are those are alt-right symbols. They got rid of all the big uh, media figures, you know, uh, Yiannopoulos and Cernovich and McGinnis and all of these people. Oh, well, we got the moderates left now. We got the, the uh, uh, you know, rhinos left now. Let's start whittling them down, too, until it's nothing but a giant fucking hyper leftist hug box. Not sure about that. I think Shapiro's will stay. There's a lot of neo uh, neocons will stay. I think Bill Crystal's gonna stay. Uh, you know, those guys they're pretty much on. Yeah, but there's the nothing lines. there. I mean, they're they're pretty much you know anti-Trump. You know, yeah, pretty much the in the pocket of the establishment. If, if you're if they're able to have you on cable television comfortably, if they're able to have you on Meet the Press comfortably, you're not really a controversial figure. I, I would I would just that that's my opinion. You know, yeah, that's I mean? the point. I think people like Jesse Lee Peterson will probably get kicked off a lot quicker than Ben Shapiro. Yeah, Ben Shapiro's not going anywhere. Why would they? It, it makes no sense. Well, I think what Jim's saying is they're going to save him for last. Like once they well, successfully, you know, partnered. if they yeah, if they if they successfully scrub everybody else, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. But yeah, that that's what I'm getting at is one yeah, their yeah. definition will shift. They're not going to build a machine to get rid of people and then stop using it after they get rid of two chuckle fucks. They're going to roll that fucker down like a lawnmower on top of everybody until the last guy sitting there going, "Oh shit, maybe I should have paid attention." Oh, really, Ben? Maybe you should have. So you notice they took they took out Alex Jones. I mean, there are people more controversial than Alex Jones even now that they could have taken out. They they took him out to kind of make an example. And also, I mean, I, I would say, I think as Dan mentioned earlier, it's the media playing a lot of role in this too because, oh, this guy, well, he said this about Sandy Hook five years ago. He shouldn't be here. You know, they kind of built this drumbeat. You have people like Oliver Darcy who works for, for CNN, Brian Stelter who works for CNN, other people who work for other mainstream media organizations to where they just build the drumbeat and they keep fucking with these people every single day, day after day, to where it gets to be, well, you know what? How much money are we making off these people? How much money are we making off Jones? You know, it, it, yeah, let's just get rid of them. I mean, do you that, think they'll ever do with like a high tech version of you know you know the Gamergate block list, where it's like if you're following this person, it automatically blocks you. I mean, that's do you remember those like like yeah, do you I do. do a, a high tech version of that, where it's like if you espouse views and are connected to people in a certain way, so that they can figure out that you're the kind of person they want gone. They wipe you out. That sort of system. I mean, that's well, kind just, of what it is, on, though. Yeah, yeah, not ahead, just too. not just on one website. I, I think they're probably going to compile a list like that that's going to be shared among the companies. So when they say that, yeah, I mean, because look at how people use social media, right? You link into your other accounts, don't you? So even if it's a different username, it's kind of right there. So I wouldn't think it's too far fetched to imagine a year or two years down the line, somebody comes out with a the big list. And every company looks at it and it's like, okay, well, I'm Twitter. His Twitter's gone. I'm Facebook. His Facebook's gone. I'm YouTube. His YouTube's gone. And then you're done. It could easily go beyond social media as well. Do you know, do you know what Grayball is in relation to Uber? So know. Uber, when they were operating illegally in certain areas, they had this uh, like artificial intelligence program called Grayball that would try to detect if someone trying to get a ride was a police officer or not by figuring out what they can from what they can get from the person's phone and trying to find who they are on social media and stuff. Do you think you could get wiped off of social media and services like Uber? <laughs> so you can't even take an Uber to the bridge to throw yourself out at, yeah. or off at, <laughs> at the thought of how 84 it's become? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it could extend into other services. I mean, shit, isn't Amazon opening up fucking grocery stores everywhere? Maybe yep. maybe Bindu is going to create use that list and you can't buy fucking lettuce now because you said uh, <laughs> nigger one too many times on Instagram. I don't know. I mean, Uber Uber are the people who bought Candid's parent company. Yeah, that's true. Also, there is, there's a joke with those Samsung fridges that are now uh, automated, basically, and you basically can't. They're going to be like, you can't open your fridge. You said nigger one too many times, or you said this on Twitter, or you said this, or you like uh, conservatives. Um, oh, well, yeah, or, or smart cities. Uh, somebody yeah. was bringing that up about MasterCard and the pressure they're putting on uh, Stripe and PayPal. I mean, you look at smart cities, that's a joint effort between MasterCard and Microsoft to basically create a central data control for a city that uses both their systems for payment and information. So <laughs> they could do all sorts of crazy fucking shit because you said something they didn't like. Especially if, because I believe those Amazon places, uh, those you mean the automatic, automated Amazon grocery stores, right? Yeah. They, yep. 
they let you pay using your phone. Imagine if if a prerequisite was when you buzz your phone, you have to be happy with them doing a quick little scan through it. Yeah, we need to confirm your identity. So yeah. we have to scan the phone and then to have you take a picture of yourself to confirm your identity. <laughs> Give it a scan. They check all your everything you've ever sent for anything wrong thinky. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna and then I, somebody in your chat was saying, Well, you just build your own site, you go to your own site. Look what happened to Gab. Well, Microsoft said we're gonna pull your ass off our servers unless so you get who's rid of the Who's gonna host Lexi your only. site? Yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing. And that that's gonna be the next thing. You know, these sites are, are registered with you know, we, we talked about ICANN earlier and you know, there there's a group of people who actually, you know, host the whatever registrar data for this stuff. And that that's gonna be I, I think that's gonna be their final frontier where they just look man, pull just, just build your own internet. Yeah, just, just build your own internet. No big deal. N never mind the fact that all of these companies, including Candid Candid, including others, got funding from the federal government to to start up. We you know, I saw a tweet, Candid had money from DARPA, um, Twitter, all these companies had government funding uh to, to kind of seed themselves and but now they're private corporations and how dare you you know interfere with them that that's, that's just it's mind boggling to me how how cucked people are to to accept that argument and, and you saw trump At least I, I don't know it wasn't the government but but you saw trump this weekend he actually did now he didn't name infowars by by name uh, but but he pretty much came out and said, you know, this isn't fair. He finally spoke out on it. But is it going to go any further than that? What do you mean, Trump? Or do you mean they're they're going after people? No, well, I mean, one hundred percent, them going after people is going to go further. But I mean, Trump saying that, like, is is it going to be action? I mean, there there are some things he could do from an executive standpoint where he could, you know, I mean, he, he couldn't completely fix it, but some, some executive orders here and there could, could put a crimp in there. In See, I, I, I don't even know what form it would take. I mean, it'd be interesting what kind of government intervention you could expect. I mean, I joked about it earlier before the, the stream that it would be like a tech czar. Um, but I mean, maybe he could do some kind of interventionist policy, but I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm one of those guys that thinks big government, anytime it interferes with anything, uh, fucks it up. But yeah, I, I don't see a way out. I, I mean, mean, normally I would agree with you, but you know, what other answer is there to this? I've already given you my answer. Well, I mean, <laughs> besides the uh, blood and soil. Gun what about answer. the, uh, what about the burn it down option of trying to get the government to retract its protections? See, I like get. that. I mean, that was my idea behind uh, digitally assured destruction is t taking two big corporations and basically making them beat the shit out of each other to see who gets to fuck the uh, little guy over the most. Uh, the idea of basically ruining something for everybody. Uh, so you, I mean, if I'm going to be thrown in the gutter, I want to drag them down with me. So the burn it down option is always good in my book. Salt okay, so how, how are you going to burn it down? Well, like you said, you take away safe harbor. I just don't. I mean, if you they're say, going to be so hands-on, right, and picking and choosing what can go on their platform, Safe Harbor's gone. Now yeah, you are publishers. fully responsible. Yeah. I mean, so you can only burn it down to a certain percent. point, though. They have people banned, you know, on IP bans, MAC address bans. Most people aren't smart enough to get around that. I just, I just hate to put it that way. But, you know, uh, a lot of people, once they get banned to that level, they just quit participating. I think so, how beautiful his idea is too, because here, here's what'll happen if if they pull safe harbor like that, and suddenly, uh, you know, big boy lawsuits are on the table. Yeah, instead uh, of DM, I, instead of DMCA talking about, playing on a video, it's fucking sue YouTube. Oh, you're yeah, talking that's about change the the. Well, for no, the you people said, who don't understand. You're saying so there there are protections for Twitter, for Facebook, for all these yes, corporations. They're saying the that they're works, just yep. pro providing the service, and that people who use their service to do malfeasance or whatever, yeah, yep. that, that they're not responsible. They're personally responsible, right? So you're saying pull that. Yeah, well, because I'll tell you what'll happen. It'll be corporate warfare. Hollywood will say, "Hey, you know what? Um, YouTube is pretty fucking popular." What if we could take it down and put our own version up? I know. Let's make a bunch of accounts, put up a bunch of copyrighted material, and then sue Google itself because they allowed it because Safe Harbor doesn't exist anymore. And once we bankrupt their ass, we'll build our own YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that, but you also come up against th – there has to be some – legislative will to actually get that passed and if you look at the the lobbyists and the people who have the most money i, I don't like 
you know, we're talking about Google, we're talking about Twitter, we're talking about all these, you know, social media giants. They have millions and millions of dollars. Some big Hollywood like, money would like that idea. Well, They'd yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing. They've been at war for for years and years now. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe pit them against each other. Might well, be yeah, an Hollywood. I guarantee you, if if people went to Hollywood and say, "Hey, how'd you like to fuck?" google into the dirt and take over everything holly'd be like hollywood would be like we'll do the campaign we'll pay the fucking money the studios would be completely behind that that's an option all right let, let me uh read these uh oh, let me make sure i got here. oh it, and let, just one follow-up because people are saying well they would still censor though yeah that's absolutely right but the the idea of you know, if it, you you have to step up to a point where the person that you're facing off with understands that y you will salt the earth, that you'll burn it all down, that it will be a, a pyrrhic victory for them, that uh, you know they're going to lose so much more than you're going to lose. This titan, this billion dollar company, is going to be brought to its fucking knees out of spite. I mean, if you're going to get fucked anyway, you should at least have a choice in whose dick's going in your ass, right? I mean, I, I will, I mean, I agree with what you're saying, but if the common man, you know, the regular person, you know, they're shutting them down from these services and they don't really know how to get back on. So I know somebody, you know, they recently on Twitter, you know, went through another cleansing and, and started banning people. A lot of people don't actually understand how to get back on Twitter. Now, per, you know, I know how to get back on if it comes to that, but you know, they, they might have to get a burner phone. They might have to get a new SIM well, card. That's they, another, that's you know, a lot of people don't understand of, how to get back. Yeah, go ahead. That's a group of people growing who would support the burn it down option because they're like, fuck sure. this. I can't but, even but use if it they anymore. Can't get on, but if they can't get on the services, you know what I mean? I, I, I guess I, I agree with what you're saying, but if they can't get on there to cause shit, like what is the, I don't know. Well, Ralph, let me put it this way. Who runs Hollywood? Um... So what group of people, people do you think is yeah. going to have the best opportunity to fuck <laughs> Google in its ass? <laughs> Let's call it the merchant option. So, That's so, what we'll call it. <laughs> the mercantile <laughs> option. I, I, I don't know. I just think it should be – maybe there should be more resources for people to understand how they could get back on these services when they get banned because there are definite ways – but I, I can't tell you how many people have messaged me over the last week, like, what, or emailed me, like, what, I can't get on Twitter anymore, What what's happening? I mean, there there are definite ways to get back on, but they, they have certain methods, so, you know, your IP address, first off, unplug your fucking router, plug it back in, that'd be a good way to get a new IP address, um, or MAC address, or just, you know, they're trying to pinpoint people now. I know people who had an alternate account who, who have been banned, you know, whatever years ago months ago and they came back and they got banned again because they're trying to crack down on that now I, I think some uh education for the masses would be good i, I don't know how to you know I, I don't know that i have the perfect yeah, i'm, I'm not sure system. how long a guide to evading bans would stay up anywhere it could spread maybe but i, I don't know there's a lot of people that don't understand how to get back on and so without that, so Trump himself, I mean, Trump, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to attribute everything he did to, to the internet. Cause I don't think that's true, but without those, you know, shock troops, <laughs> without those people out there doing all that, I, I don't, I don't know that he could have done it. I mean, that's me personally. And so I, I think him coming out, him being outspoken on this is huge. And I think he should continue. And I think he should go further because if he doesn't, not only is he, it, it's not even about the election for him. Dude, they want to see Trump in prison. They want to see his family in jail. They want to see his assets stripped. If, if Trump, it, it's I, almost like what Sam Hyde said was true. These people no, want, it's absolutely want true. Dead, homeless and your children raped. Yeah. It's absolutely true. And that's the thing, I, you know, I don't, you know, presume that he would ever hear this, but if anybody could, you know, look, they want to see Trump broken. They want to see his family destitute. They want to see him in prison. They want to see him, you know, dead, to be honest with you. And so there's nothing too, there, there's almost nothing too far that he could do to, to try to stop this thing. And so that that's my view on it. And I don't know if he'll take it to heart. I was finally, after, you know, a week and a half, he finally did speak on it this weekend. So I was heartened to see that. But, uh, 
Okay, I'll calm down. Uh, Troy have, Fowler's... Have, have, have we depressed your audience enough yet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just Black Pill Central, but... Troy Fowler says, Egg plays on normal. I'll have, I'm going to have to come back to your stream sometime. Uh, some name I can't pronounce says, People of the same trade seldom meet together, but the conversation usually ends in a conspiracy against the public. Quote Adam Smith. Herod Nealon says, Bouldergate lives. Tavid Andrew says, Ralph, get it right. His name is Juden Juan. Uh, the White Boar says, Esoteric mercantology level increased by 14 of 88. <laughs> Corey Fowler says, excuse me. Yeah, I've gotten in a few tent bands. I'm no one important, but I'm more towards moderate who likes to talk about race relations. Yosemite Sam says the 99% needs to overthrow the 1%. Snake 56 says Shapiro is bulletproof. He will toe the line. See how he became anti-Trump. Yeah, you know, and I've talked about this on this program before, but it's so funny how those people... He was literally one of the main people trumpeting the Michelle Fields got assaulted by Corey Lewandowski. Oh God, Trump's a thug and, and how dare you vote for this guy. And soon as the election changed, soon as his mill fucking ticket changed, he changed and just with no shame at all and, and no explanation. Just, it's just disgraceful. I, I don't know. Uh, Spectre 82 says they take out people who bridge between the normies and the extremists. Lord Akira says they took out Alex because he posed the greatest danger to legacy media who are basically the Luddites of our time. They're trying to desperately to hold on to their role as gatekeeper. Entity Steel says, but, but Alex Jones broke toss. Cuck, not realizing that every toss is written in a way where everyone is in violation of it at all times. Yeah, that that's the thing I don't think people realize. <laughs> it it it's meant to be opaque. It's meant to be uh where where you can always be in violation of it to where they can take you off for anything. Um uh, and, and and it's also not just that they can take you off for anything. They can let other people stay for anything. So they can look at one thing that that's similar versus another and say, "Oh, this guy's gone" versus the other person who's allowed to stay. Uh yeah. Well, yeah, wasn't a, a good example of that. What was the no, no, no. It was, a, it was a journalist running an account. Remember after Charlottesville, he started doxing everybody that was involved in it, putting up uh, names, addresses, yeah. phone numbers, and they yeah, allowed it. And he had that. a Patreon, too, for it. Yeah. Whereas, if that was on the other side, everything cut off, Twitter cut off, Patreon cut off. Uh, by the way, you mentioned Patreon. You've seen what's going on lately with with Patreon. Yeah, no, I, I've seen what's going on with it. What do you think about it? Um, I, I know everybody likes to say Jack uh, Conti, right? That's the guy. I, yeah. Is a cuck. I, I don't know. I, I'm getting a, a sneaking suspicion that there are certain companies out there that, while liberal uh, in their mindset, uh, you know, as far as it goes towards corporate, are maybe getting strong armed uh, by the back end financial side of it. That That's what got me interested in the MasterCard thing. That's what got me interested in um, how much pressure can be applied to them. It's really weird that MasterCard was specifically say, not this person. It's really weird that um, BitChute would be told in really open terms that um, Stripe wants to do business with them, but a financial partner won't allow it. So it, I, I feel like maybe these companies are, are kind of getting fucked over a barrel, and that that's kind of what I want to really look into. It, you know what I, I, I will give look I'm on Patreon too I don't know for how long <laughs> but uh, uh, w one of the things they said was you know they didn't just come out and say you know what we pulled you for terms of service you were, you were out of line whatever and they have done that in the past they said MasterCard told us we had to pull you and we pulled you Right, and same thing. Basically, same thing with BitChute. I mean, they were told that Stripe. They they, they told them so in the what, email. What, yeah, no, we let want me to ask do you. You mentioned that I, I don't even know what's going on with BitChute. I, I didn't see that. So, so what is the full story there with BitChute? So, BitChute got a, a email, um, a message from Stripe. Stripe is like a, a payment processor, right? Uh, yeah, of course. They'll send it. You know, the cash you get uh, to your bank account, kind of thing. Uh, and Stripe told them pretty much bluntly. Um, we don't mind working with you. Uh, we kind of like your website. We think it's good financially, but we're being told by a financial partner that we cannot do business with you. And and so what what was? I, I I'm just I'm completely. I, 
I'm almost completely in the dark. That's why I'm asking. So, w- what was Bitchute's response? I, I don't even know. Bitch, Bitchute's response, from what I've seen, and I'm, I'm still looking into it, was, "What the fuck does that mean? Right? <laughs> like, what, what do you mean uh, that a financial partner um, doesn't want to do business with us?" And then somebody from Stripe did respond later on, saying, "Oh, uh, we sent the wrong message." I, I don't think that they sent the wrong. Uh, I, I don't think they sent the wrong message. I think they, I think they sent the right message, and then they were like, "Oh fuck, we probably should have said that wrong." Yeah, yeah. I, again, the Mastercard thing. There are a lot of Obama officials in that. There are a lot of uh, very, very outspoken political people at Mastercard. So I, it, it's got me very curious. That's why. I'm oh yeah, you, you know that email we sl- we sent you where we just detailed a. Uh horrifying little fact about the extreme power certain people have over controlling your platform yeah a finger slipped now let me ask uh let me ask you um harmful opinions first then we'll go to jim do you, do you think there's any hope in, in an alternate platform so there are people you know black pilled people that, that message me all the time like well you know what uh, there, there's really no hope uh, you know, it would be great if if Bitshoot had a, a live streaming, but it's probably not going to happen. Even if it does happen, they're going to get shut down. Um, is, is there any? I mean, I will say my view. I, I think it. You should fight till the very end. Obviously, we're here on our third channel in the last ten days. Uh, I think that's obvious. What I think, but what is your view? In terms of a platform that mimics what already exists, you're probably fucked. Uh, I mean, even Gab has had problems with certain messages people have posted because of, I believe, their domain registrar basically said, we're going to drop you if you don't delete these. Oh, so Microsoft, if... yeah. Oh, that was on Gab? Yeah, Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, they were hosted by Microsoft right. Azure. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, anything that, that follows a traditional format and tries to copy those things, they're going to be resting on the same thing as everything else, and they're going to end up, even if they have the best will in the world, uh, they're going to get overridden by things they can't fight. What I think there is hope for, if people are willing to fund it, I guess, uh, because you're going to have trouble dealing with any sort of payment processors and various other services, is there's the potential for a, a distributed alternative. Um, I'm not a very techie person. I don't know exactly how it works, but so, some there's some social website or other that um, doesn't have you know central hosting, and it sort of sort of uh, protects it from censorship. And anyway, that sort of thing will protect you from some side of it. And in order to, to protect yourself from the traditional uh, limits, uh, I think you're going to have to start looking at maybe paying to use alternative social medias that that get around these issues i don't know i it is pretty bleak but i think there is a a technological solution if you can get enough people to transition to something that avoids the traditional issues what do you think of moving straight to crypto do everything you're using cryptocurrency that's what i that's what i was referring to that's what i was referring to i don't know enough about it to talk about it to be honest yeah, I used to use uh, I used to use Bitcoin when it was worth about two dollars when I was buying weed off of it. Now it's worth thousands of dollars. I wish I had saved that Bitcoin. Let's just put it that way. Uh, here's the article: Bitshoot just lost its payment platform Stripe. Uh, I didn't even I didn't even see this. Uh, uh, these uh, it's pretty much the article is just like a quote of tweets. On Wednesday of this week, we received notification via email that Stripe will no longer be able to have us as a customer. We asked for a phone call, but they denied, declined, excuse me, and said that there's no possibility of appeal. I know something similar happened to vote in the past. They gave us only five days notice before restricting our content. We will make sure anyone who has owed money is paid, and we are working on getting a new payments provider. We've already contact, contacted some and started their approval process. I've decided to include the reason Stripe gave us below. Copy directly from one of their emails to us. Please know, Richard, that it would be our absolute preference to continue working with your business. And this decision is in no way a reflection of our feelings towards your business from either a moral or legal standpoint. Rather... This is a restriction imposed upon us directly from our financial partners who whose use excuse me who use 
it, this has to be a typo because it makes no sense, who use have an archaic and frankly antiquated view of non-traditional businesses as such. Our hands are truly tied here. I hope you can appreciate that. So yeah, Stripe cut them off. I mean, honestly, and, and we're sitting here talking on, on the kill stream. You know, we're still on Patreon. We're still on PayPal. <laughs> I'm pretty much shocked. And and, and, and to be honest, it, it would just take probably a little bit of pressure to, <laughs> to cut that off. I, I don't even know. I, I hate to advertise that. But, I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, when you look at everything else that's happening. Uh... And the thing about it is that, uh, you know, I don't think it's just the quote unquote financial partners either. I think that this whole thing goes a lot deeper than just, uh, you know, like, for instance, JP Morgan Chase telling them, hey, we don't like these guys, you know, shut it down. I think that, you know, I talked about the, uh, the, the Silicon Valley media complex, but there's also this Silicon Valley investment banking complex all of these organizations are tied together and i really feel like i won't say necessarily conspiracy or collusion but there's definitely i feel like there's some conversations being had between some of these media companies and the silicon valley guys and these banking guys and they're like hey this guy's a competitor shut it down all right let me let me read this uh, Entity Steel says, but, but, Alex Jones broke toss, cuck, not realizing that every talk, I already read that, but it deserves to be read again, to be honest. Vegeter says, first they came for the Nazis and that did not speak out. Jonas Traber says, wouldn't it be hilarious if Trump bought, excuse me, if Trump bought Twitter with the blue check marks, close their accounts and flood Gab? Doubt it, but I would like to see it happen anyway. James Panzone says, removing Safe Harbor would prevent any new platforms from growing since a single copyright violation could result in, result in tens of thousands of dollars of lawsuit. Yeah, but how else are you going to go with these people? Well, and, also, you don't you don't revoke it from every platform, just the ones yeah. that interfere with content to the point where they become a publisher. Like, like how, I don't know, th there are negatives, you know, associated with, with every option, but, but what can you do? To just let them continue? I, I don't know. Um, and, and it's going to take, you know, every idea that that's been, you know, posited on this stream is going to take, you know, legislative action. I, I'm not confident in the legislature for anything, um, not bridges, not roads, not healthcare, not anything, much less this. But I, I don't think it's I, I think you should still push for it. I, I don't think it's I, I don't want to go full black pill, but yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm just I'm just hopping back quickly to the the the, the anti black bill question you just asked. I did a quick search, and there's a there's a service called Mastodon.social, um, and I'm not yeah, saying to yeah, use I this because that. I don't yeah. I don't know anything about it uh, except that it says it's decentralized like the way email works, and it's also open source. So if if you have people working on open source projects and things that are decentralized, you'll be protected against censorship a bit and if things go weird it will be easier to pop up your own copy of it and uh things yeah, like I that saw i think that, that sort of path that uh, path generally might be good there's a lot of people using mastodon um and yeah I but saw, are, 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 you ahead. guys are forgetting about stuff like lava bit i mean okay so you got this email service what happens the nsa comes in and says give us all your shit we want access right now and you can't True. tell anybody about it if you mention anything we're throwing your ass in prison he had to burn the site down to stop that from happening and couldn't talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Well, because he had an NSA, you know, warrant or whatever. Yeah. So what's the answer? I mean, besides your, your other answer. Uh... Uh, my, my answer to <laughs> what you're talking about is uh, <laughs> just you give it time. Uh, there are rich people, very, very wealthy people that are getting fucked with like the normal people are getting fucked with. Wait till their interest turns into... Uh, maybe trying to fund a competitor, something that doesn't need crowdfunding. Maybe you got an Elon Musk. Maybe you got a Kim dot com. Maybe. But you it's going to take that type of money, though. It's going to take yes, the it big is. books. You're going to have yeah. to have somebody yeah. with fuck you money get mad enough to do something. Yes. Yeah. It, it's not yeah, just going to be, be you know, us. Yeah. It's not just going to be us sitting here on YouTube mad, which which we are. But you know, it, it takes capital. It takes infrastructure to to create 
you know a viable alternative and and i've said this for months if not years if if people on trump's team if people on the right are not realizing that this is an existential crisis and that they need to put every fucking dollar they have into this and that they need to build that infrastructure they're fucking stupid because once that gets snuffed out it's snuffed out for good and the only approved thoughts on on online you know on the internet whatever the fuck you want to call it are are woke thoughts and it's my my nine-year-old needs to be a tranny and you know hillary oh what what a great what a great woman once that happens it's going to be very hard to turn it back and and when there's no contradiction to that I, I, i couldn't imagine anything more important than to preserve a a place where your your followers where your adherents could you know post without fear of getting banned i mean that that is literally if i was trump's campaign manager you know political advisor that would be the most important segment most important thing i could ever impart to that person like i just it it's that big and, and and once it gets snuffed out, it's gonna be very hard to to regain. So that's that's my personal. Um, okay, well, I, I, gentlemen, I I would love to stick around for a little longer, but I have a brist to attend. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, uh, the synagogue's <laughs> got a big thing going. The rabbi needs me there. It's sponsored by Mastercard. I have to show up. Thank you. You, you signed the contract, so. I yeah, I can't discuss this any further. <laughs> at least for another three. Years. And it's going to have to be on the down low. But uh, thanks for having me on. I'm glad you're back, Harmful. I'm glad your channel's doing good. 12K, uh, blowing Matt out of the water. (laughs) You're gaining more than he's losing. (laughs) Thank you very much. That's very good, man. All right, you guys take it easy.